Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to July 16th, 2021 Select Board meeting. I would like to thank all who are in attendance, uh, either virtually uh, this evening. I'd like to thank WACA for uh, broadcasting it on Facebook and other uh, virtual uh, sites as well. Um, we have, I, just, I would just like to quickly uh, read uh, a notification that we received and it has to do with the governor today signing the extension of certain COVID-19 measures that were adopted in the state of emergency. Uh, the legislation that was uh, signed into law this morning by Governor Baker came as an emergency preamble, meaning that it takes effect immediately. The new law and other provisions allows remote meeting for public bodies until April 1st, 2022. So meetings like the select board meetings and other board meetings can continue on Zoom or other virtual sites. Tempor temporarily reinstates remote permission for representative and town meetings, nonprofit member meetings and notary service and reverse mortgage loans and consultings. But I would like to say that uh, for our tent and purposes, uh, we will continue what we've been doing for the past year until we have some sort of program and IT uh, technology available so that we could either meet in person and continue having citizens participation uh, virtually. And we're working on that. So bear with us and over the next couple of weeks, we will make a decision as to the, the path that we wish to choose. Okay, so thank you with that. And I greatly appreciate your indulging me to uh, read that aloud. With that, I would like to open it up for citizens participation. If there's anybody here that has uh, anything that they would like to say. Okay, Mr. Desoni, you can unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good evening all. And the reason why I reacted to that announcement was that for me, I got the reason to stay home because of my dad and that's always helpful. But everything else is going well. Um, today has been an excellent day. Our double vaccine shots take full effect as of today. We are now completely head to toe. We can go on without a mask only as an option now. Me and my dad both. So that's hopefully for the town to have good goodwill towards that and to understand that at the uh, we care, care, we care givers kind of like to see some fresh air now and then so we get out there. And um, I know what I know that um, town meeting is on the agenda, so I won't mention it. I'll just say I was happy with the uh, result at the end with the town zoning. And um, I went by the um, police fire, the fire safety building site, and it's getting, it's getting there. It's look, it look, look it's getting past the bed walk for the stones to uh, civilization now. I, and I had a, a good meeting with you guys yesterday to answer any questions or ask any questions, but I saw on the, um, the right up the, where the box is, where all the X's are, the, the schedule, that answered all my questions. So everything's going well, vaccine up here and getting ready to throw away the mask and everything else is having for a good summer ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I don't see anybody else uh, with that. And we're coming up to 7.05. We're right on schedule. I would like to turn this over to uh, town manager, Michael Herbert, uh, for his uh, appointment, if you would, please. Mr. Herbert. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, as people have probably heard by now, Chief Alfano is going to re-enter retirement um, so go back a second time, effective um, at the end of the day, June 30th of 2021. And uh, we will have much more to say about that later. I'm sure Vin will have much more to say about that later too. Um, but in the meantime, we, we need to turn our attention towards who is going to be taking over operations of the Ashland Police Department on July 1st. And after careful consideration, I've made the decision to promote Lieutenant Richard Briggs to the position of acting chief of the Ashland Police Department. 
Um, most of you, most everybody knows uh, Lieutenant Briggs. What you might not know about him is, is the extensive resume and experience that he has. Um, he's been a member of our department for almost 20 years. Uh, he's been the Lieutenant Executive Officer since uh, July 2007. He's had a hand in virtually every single bit of the operational aspects of the police department um, and a lot of the administrative aspects as well. So that is not going to be unfamiliar to him. And what a lot of people don't know is that he has also expanded his education to not only include policing, but um, social services. So for example, Lieutenant Briggs has a master's in counseling psychology from Framingham State in addition to a master's in public administration. Um, and just, I did explain my rationale to the department and to the select board before, but just for the public, um, like I said, Lieutenant Briggs, he's got vast experience. He can step in on day one and do this. Um, he seems to have the support of the department. And I have really been impressed with Lieutenant Briggs, especially over the last couple of years and the way he's handled some adversity and some disappointments in his professional career. So for that reason, I'm happy to appoint him as the acting chief of police effective July 1st. So, Lieutenant Briggs, would you like to say anything? Sure, I'll keep it short because I know uh, you have a pretty full agenda tonight, but um, uh, to say I'm honored and, and humbled um, at this opportunity uh, would be an understatement for sure. Um, you know, I've been a member of this department for 20 years and it's the, the community is my home in reality and uh, the men and women of the department are my family. So uh, I'd like to just thank you, Michael, uh, the board, Chief Alfano, um, and especially the men and women of the uh, police department uh, for their support and the confidence they have in me to, um, to lead this department into the future. Um, I know for the sake of the board, the, Michael and I had a conversation last week and he mentioned that um, Chief Alfano's shoes are going to be big shoes to fill, and I couldn't agree with him more. Uh, but he's pointed those shoes in the, uh, the right direction. Um, so um, with that said, um, I feel very fortunate to um, be able to work alongside some pretty talented uh, and dedicated people within the police department who um, come to work every single day and give it their all. So um, with, the, with what the last year and a half has really uh, provided to not only our department, but the community, um, there's a bright, the future's looking pretty bright for the PD and, uh, and we're excited for what it holds for us. So um, I'll leave it at that. I thank you uh, again um, for the opportunity. I'm humbled, I'm honored, and, uh, and I'm excited to get to work. Thanks, Lieutenant Briggs. Uh, any additional uh, comments from uh, select board members at this point? Uh, just to uh, wish uh, Rich uh, uh, the best and uh, um, as he, he moves into, uh, as, as you described, big shoes. And uh, certainly uh, I think we'll, we'll look forward also to celebrating uh, Chief Alfano as he uh, re-retires. Mm. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I would, I would say the same. Congratulations on this appointment, uh, Rich. I uh, look forward to seeing what you do with the department during the time. And I'm looking forward to working uh, a lot closer to all of you as well. So Great. I'll say, um, yeah, um, Lieutenant Briggs, congratulations on your appointment. Um, you do have big shoes to fill. I was talking to Chief Alfano. He told me he was staying another year and a half, so I don't I don't know what happened in that conversation. I tried to talk him into it, trust me. <laughs> um, you know, just one thing, um, I just, uh, you know, uh, Chief Alfano has been very um, successful in gaining the confidence of the community. So, um, you know, I hope you're able to do the same uh, in your tenure as chief or interim chief, I should say. So thank you for stepping up for that. Well, Briggsy. I wish you the very best. You've got definitely some big shoes to fill. Don't trip over them. That's the only thing I, I just hope you don't trip over them. Do what you do your best. I don't know you well. Uh, I look forward. I wish this was in person so that we could all be together and, uh, you know, 
give a handshake, but uh, when I see you, I'll, I'll wish you the best. Thank you, Joe. Good luck. Good luck to everybody. Thank you. Chief, any, uh, any, any words you would like to uh, add? Oh, Joe, you know I've been chomping at the bit. <laughs> First off, I, I have to point out, uh, and I'm going to spin the camera a little. The entire Ashland Police Department, if they're not on that screen with you, is uh, with us at 91 Main Street, jammed in here like sardines. Um, and I include in that all the support personnel, the staff, the auxiliary police are here, and there's a lot of uh, wives, husbands, significant others, boyfriends, girlfriends, everyone is here to support Lieutenant Briggs. And I, you know, I can honestly say in the past two and a half years, I've been very, very impressed with this man and his performance. He's been my, my right hand and my left hand. He's, uh, he always comes through in some very critical situations for us. So um, I think I speak for the entire department. Uh, we all trust our lives and we trust the safety of the town to this man, his abilities, his integrity and his ethics. So I, I think uh, it was a very wise choice to, when you have qualified candidates within, always, always look to the qualified candidates first. And I really thank uh, our town manager, Mike Herbert, for his foresight and his, uh, his faith and trust that he's placed in the department. And I also thank the board because you know, you've always stood behind us. I think part of, part of that is that the beautiful building that, that's being built, the new home for everybody in this room uh, and our, our brothers and sisters at the fire department. Um, I think the Ashley and public safety is in a really good place right now. Um, and we wanna continue that forward movement. And I think uh, Mike's choice of Rich to, to lead everybody there is, is uh, the best choice, the right choice at the right time. So again, thank you for your support. Thank you, Chief, appreciate that. And again, the best of luck, uh, LT, uh, in your in your in your new title. Thank you, but, but but I won't I won't call you chief until July first. Is that okay? <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank all. you all. Thank you for everybody Thank for you. being there too for that uh, sign of support. That's great. Thank good you. Luck, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, that's big shoes to fill for sure. Um. We're a little, we're a little uh, behind schedule, but that's okay. That's a good reason to be behind schedule. We have a, a 710 uh, discussion with uh, Decanted Wine Truck. I hope I pronounced that right. They're looking for a one day liquor licenses for Saturday, July 24th uh, from noon to 6 p.m. Uh, Culture Fest at uh, the corner spot and Saturday, August 28th at from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that's some sort of uh, shopping event. So I believe uh, Peter is here, I believe. Yep, I'm here. And if, and if um, Peter, you would like to uh, discuss uh, your reasons um, for, for, for requesting these, uh, uh, these dates and what you provide for the com uh, community at the Connor Spot on those, on those dates, uh, feel free. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Peter Walderzak. Um, I am part owner of Decanted Wine Truck um, with my wife and another partner. Um, we are a, a mobile wine truck. Uh, we also serve beer and occasionally a cocktail or two. Um, we renovated a 1970s camper and made it look really pretty, really pleasing to all of the, the eyes that see it. And we go around basically booked on uh, by appointments and uh, go to parties, functions, other type of activities. And we park the wine truck and serve the guests. We're not the typical like food truck where we can just drive around and serve wine to whoever wants it. Our 12C catering license allows us to go to properties that people who book us as caterers and we, it allows us to serve um, alcohol. We are applying for this uh, one day license for actually for two days um, to come to Ashland. Ashland is like many of the other communities out there that are starting to come alive. Now that all the vaccines and regulations have been lifted, come there and hopefully fill a need for these functions, uh, be able to serve wine and 
what other um, alcoholic beverages are requested to participants in these events. We're based out of Worcester. Um, we're a small business. It's me and my wife and another husband and wife. I live in Hudson, Mass. Um, the other partners live in Northboro. Um, we are TIP certified, so we are aware of how to tell when people have had too much to drink and how to cut them off properly. We have Serve Safe certified, um, which means that we know all the proper food handling and alcoholic handling practices. Um, we also know the proper way to ask for identification and read those identifications to make sure that every participant that comes to our truck is 21 years or older. That is one of our core principles. Um, and we're just really excited for these events. You know, this is our first year in business. Uh, we, you know, my wife is the brainchild of this. It came out of necessity from the pandemic. Um, people weren't allowed to go to places to hang out with their friends and loved ones. So my wife came up with the idea of bringing, quote unquote, the party to their house. And the response has been incredible. We are fully booked for the full summer. Um, we are very excited about coming to Ashland and sharing our very cool, very eclectic wine trailer with your community. Very good, Peter. Thank you. Right. I will open it up to uh, other board members if they have any questions uh, to Peter. Uh, Steve, I saw your hand first. I'll get you landed next. Uh, thank you for the uh, description, Peter. Sounds like a great concept and uh... Uh, you know, I think uh, it's it's great that uh, you'll you'll have a visit from your from your company uh, over the summer. Uh, my question is is really you mentioned that you operate under a, a catering license, and the question is that it's not related to anything other than than my interest in your how do you supply your supply of wine? Are you required to purchase it under certain conditions? Do you have to purchase it through a wholesaler uh, as opposed to a, a, a wine shop? Yeah, exactly. That's a good question. Um, we work out of a commercial kitchen in Worcester, uh, which allows us to safely prep all of our food and our wares. But that is also where our wine is delivered to from a wholesaler, mostly MS Walker, which is also um, a locally based distributor. So yeah, we can't, we just don't roll into the local packy and grab a couple of bottles of wine and then throw it on our truck. We have, we have to follow very strict guidelines based on the um, alcohol and liquor bureau. And we do to the, the letter of the law. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, great concept and I look forward. I'm more of a beer drinker. My wife is the wine, wine person. So we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll see you. We'll have, we'll have a beer for you, Steve. Don't worry. <laughs> Make it cold. Yolani. <laughs> Uh, so thank you, Peter, for coming and, and answering our questions. Uh, I had an opportunity to look at your website. It looks like a great model. My question is, it looks like most of the things that you do are planned events where someone pays you to show up. Yep. So what were your, obviously, that's not what this event is about. You're going to be coming and selling wine or beer. So what is your, you know, what's the, you know, how many things will you be offering? Uh, what will the price range be? Um, just so that people have an idea when they're coming, what they're going to be um, offered. Yeah, another great question. Uh, you know, we are working very closely with Beth, um, you know, especially my wife and uh, Melissa, who is the other partner. My wife and Melissa are basically the faces of the business. They're the ones that will be coming to the event. I just fill in where I can and try not to screw things up too bad, like <laughs> the board of selectmen meetings in Ashland. So <laughs> um, we'll work closer with them. We'll try to be stocked with it, everything and anything that would, you know, mostly it'll probably be beer and wine and maybe like one type of cocktail. I'm not really privy to exactly what it is, but I, in terms of price, one thing that our model is based on is trying to offer a glass of wine or a beer less expensive than what you would get at a restaurant. Right. So we don't, we're not trying to, you know, create large margins here. We want to be competitive with those restaurants that people go to. So instead of maybe going to that restaurant or that bar to have a drink, they invite us over along with all their friends and keep it contained. So the pricing will be, you know, relative. I think the average glass of wine goes for like, and don't call me on this. Nope, that's okay. <laughs> six or seven bucks maybe. And, and the okay. same with the beer. So okay. 
it's not going to be anything crazy compared to what you find at the bar okay. or the restaurant. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. Brandy. Uh, so thank you, um, Peter. I'm looking forward to, to, um, to seeing your truck. I, unlike Steve, I am a wine drinker. So I am uh, very excited to have a wine option come to corner spot. <laughs> I haven't had one um, outside of um, like a local wine um, store coming to do events at corner spot. So we're, we're excited. I'm, I can't wait to see your truck. I was curious if you've had, um, it, it sounds like you've been doing, you know, private events, not sort of like bigger public events. Um, you know, corner spot, especially for something like Culture Fest can, um, can draw quite a few people. Um, I was just curious what your experience has been with sort of the, the larger crowds versus um, small intimate, um, you know, gatherings at people's homes. For sure, and that's a great point. You know, I would say a majority of our events have been between 20 to 30 people. Um, we have done several large corporate events from 90 to 150 people. Uh, as I mentioned, Melissa and Julia, my wife, um, they man the truck and they've, they've been able to do the smaller events, I believe. For your event and also another event we're doing in Tingsboro and another one I want, I'm not even going to say where it is, but I know we have a book for another one. They're going to call in, you know, the big gun here. I mean, I would go there and be serving wine. And also uh, Melissa's husband, Andrew, who is actually the one who renovated the trailer will also be called in. So we will, we will staff appropriately. We will also staff above and beyond just family members if we have to. Um, you know, I, I believe Julia and Melissa are working with Beth to kind of get an idea of how many people to expect. I mean, I can tell you the Tingsboro event we're doing is a one day event and they expect 7,000 people and we're not worried about that. So Sounds see, it's, we can pour wine quick. It's just <laughs> really easy. Well, 7,000 would be, would, would be, uh, that would be extremely optimistic for Ashley. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that just, I think that tells you what we can get up to. And so I don't want you guys to worry that there'll be long lines forming. People may want to come and check out the trailer because it really is like a piece of art of what uh, Andrew has done to it and versus what it was when we got it. It looks uh, really nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. And uh, we actually have two, we just purchased two more trailers that we're going to redo because the demand for this is so large. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Look forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. We're very excited. Well, Peter, I don't know if there are any additional questions or comments from uh, uh, select board members. No, I'm but fine. I would, but I would like to hold on. Rob, do you have anything you want to say? No, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to ask Beth. I see she's here, and I know she's part of the uh, the, the festival itself. I didn't see any um, uh, designs uh, where the uh, the alcohol would be uh, uh, the seating area for for the alcohol on you know for that for those two events. Uh, I'm assuming they're gonna be similar to what been had in the past. Yeah. I just, okay, we, I just wanna make sure. Yeah, it worked out really well with um, Zealous Beer Garden the last time they were here for COVID. We just, we just roped up the whole thing just to remind people there's sort of like one entrance in, one entrance out, right. um, and it seemed to work no problem. Um, so their, their um, truck will be located like along the parking spaces where the food trucks park, that's where we'll park them. So they'll be kind of off the beaten path. I also wanted to note too, um, that there will be food at these events. Um, I always have food when there's alcohol, um, that's never a question, um, but I just wanted you to be aware that Kith and Kin uh, food truck would be there that night. Ullman's ice cream will be there. This is for Culture Fest, I'm sorry. And um, Dorgon Ramen, I believe was going to pop up as well. So there'll be plenty of food options. Um, non-alcoholic beverage options as well. Doragon did a great job with a bunch of new teas and whatnot at the last event that we had. Um, and then for the uh, August 28th, that Shop on the Spot is a women-owned business event. So we focus on women-owned businesses. So that's why the decanted wine truck was so attractive, not to mention that several people have asked me if we could bring this to Ashland. Um, so that kind of alerted me to that. So we're supporting women-owned businesses. And we also have talked about doing a charcuterie um, through them. So they do do a little bit of food as well, um, paired with something else that evening as well. So I just thought that was worth pointing out. Thank you, Beth. I, and I knew you were going to answer all my questions on that. So thank you. I appreciate that. 
Uh, at this uh, point uh, of this uh, discussion, I don't know if there's any further need to belabor this. So I would uh, be more than happy to entertain a motion uh, which would allow decanted wine truck uh, one day licenses for Saturday, July 24th from noon to six for cultural fest and Saturday, August 28th from four to seven for the shopping event uh, that Beth was so nicely uh, able to describe for us. So, so do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor of supporting uh, those licenses for those two days, say aye. 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 Looks like you have five to zero, Peter. Congratulations. And, and I'm sorry that you don't have two buck chuck. <laughs> Listen, you, man, any special requests, send them our way. We'll, we, can, we can do whatever you want. And I really okay. appreciate appreciate it. Uh, I, I, I feel like I can go back to my wife and tell her I didn't fall flat on my face tonight and everything is going to be fine. So thank you very much. Well, thank you and best of luck. Thank Welcome you. We'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you soon. All right. Awesome. We're running a tad uh, behind and I do have uh, a hearing that I have to read, hearing notice that I have to read. Uh, this is for Ale House. So give me one quick second. Okay, uh, legal notice for the town of Ashland. Notice is hereby given that the select board will conduct a hearing regarding an alteration of license premise submitted by Ashland Ale House. The alteration is adding a permanent outdoor patio that includes 42 seats. Ashland Ale House, 23 Pond Street, Ashland, Mass, 01721. A public hearing will be held on this matter at the Ashland Town Hall, 101 Main Street, Ashland, Mass, on Wednesday, June 16th, 2021, at 7.20 p.m. Parties wishing to be heard on this matter should appear at this time and place indicated above. Interested parties who are unable to attend the hearing may submit in written comments to the Select Board's office, Town Hall, 101 Main Street, Ashland, Mass, 01721, or by emailing Susan Roby, at sroby at ashlandmass.com. Yolanda Greaves, Chair, Select Board at the time. Okay, I would like to open up this hearing for a discussion with respect to uh, here. And uh, is there anybody here from Ashland Ale House who would like to uh, speak on, on this request? Yes, I am. How you doing? Hi. Hi, Lynn. How are you? If I'm you would good. just introduce yourself to everybody, please. Yeah, sure. So my name is Lynn Maccheroni. I'm the owner and manager of the Ashland Ale House. And um, as you just read, I um, and he, am here seeking approval for a permanent outdoor patio. Okay. I saw the designs that you submitted and uh, they look very good. I like the, uh, I like the fact that uh, you have it uh, boarded off uh, very nicely, um, landscaped very nicely as well. Um, uh, before I go any further with this, uh, I do have to, uh, I opened up the hearing, right? I read, the, I read the, I just have to make sure I do this right because I don't want to get it all mixed up. So I think we're good for right now. Okay. And is there anybody here, uh, who would like to speak in addition to for, uh, this, uh, request? Other than Lynn, is there anybody here? Did we receive any uh, submittals of uh, emails for either for or against Susan on this? We request? did not. We did not. Okay. Then I will open it up to the board for discussion. Uh, Joe, just really quickly, I think Kate. Catherine uh, Jerzyk has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. I did not see that. I can't see it from on my screen. So thank you. Hi, um, so I'm in my car because I drove down here and I thought that notice was odd. Um, I thought we were still doing Zoom, but anyway, so I didn't think I could make it back home. But um, so I have a couple questions on the patio because so this is about extending the business to the patio. But I thought we were like when they did the parking lot work, we got a public notice about like doing the parking lot. So I wonder how that, that's one question. How does that fit in? Cause the patio is already there and it seems a little 
odd from my experience that there was no notice about that. Um, the second thing is I, I want to know what the, um, the like stormwater committee, like kind of their review of this, because it's, um, it took some, you know, semi permeable surface of grass into now hard surface unless um, unless it was built permeable paving. I didn't see the design. I didn't know that that was listed. I would bet that it was not permeable paving. It actually, um, what's up? It's, they use Unilox permeable pavers. Mm -hmm. It's permeable paving? Yeah. Okay, then, um, and then I guess related to that um, other question about the landscaping, if there's going to be any other like screening and then the fourth thing would be about um, sort of hours and entertainment out there possibilities and things like that. Okay, uh, uh, Kate, I, I can tell you right now, um, they're requesting just outside seating for, for eating purposes only at this point in time. Uh, there is nothing to do. I don't see it. I didn't see anything that had uh, entertainment uh, going out there. Lynn, is that correct? It's just um, correct. Just, uh, just additional food tables yep. spaces. Is that correct? At this time, yes. No entertainment or anything like that. Just eating. Okay. All right. Does that answer some of your questions, uh, Kate? Um, yeah. So I was wondering about if there is going to be any other um, like screening, and did the uh, stormwater committee kind of review that and think that that's that sort of trade-off for for the grass with the permeable paving makes sense in balance i don't know if they went in front of them or not i know that we didn't uh, they had they provided us the the information whether uh the stormwater committee has that information i do not know and then what i mean so i guess are is the public supposed to know about something before it gets I mean, my take is, I assume, yes, because when they did parking lot work, we got notices and we did not get a notice about the patio. Well, this is a continuation of something that they already had. So at one point you did get notification when they first requested this. And no, I, this is, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. No, that is not I think true. when the emergency orders went into place, but Susan, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, Ultimately, this still has to go before um, get the site approval through the planning board. That process is ongoing. That's not going to change the vote that you guys are taking. What you're taking is to allow them to serve alcohol on that space to expand the footprint for where they serve patrons. As far as some of the things Catherine's talking about, that would be dealt with at the planning board. Okay. Thank you, Susan, for the clarification. I appreciate that. Does that answer your uh, concerns, Kate? Well, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. It seems a little out of order that the patio is built um, without, like it puts everybody in a bad position, right? Like now it essentially has to be approved and that doesn't seem like that's really a good thing to do for the public. And I'm not personally saying I'm against it, but as you know, I do stand up for public participation and democracy. So, so, you know, I, I think um, businesses should, you know, things get to do what, what helps and makes sense. And I think people like the outdoor dining. And my only concern would be if there sort of ends up expanding to entertainment, I could see that being kind of a nuisance to the neighborhood. Well, they would um, have to come, they would have to come in front of this board as well with respect to that. Stephen. Yeah, I just uh, want some clarification on, you know, Kate, I think you just mentioned that everything's built already. Yes. Is that true, Lynn? Is this mm -hmm. space built out according to what you're describing here prior to the planning board process? Um, so the, the permeable pavers have been put down just to create a safer um, area for everybody. Um, it was the space that we used last year under the outdoor emergency order. And it was um, a dirt, uneven, tripping hazard. Um, so I 
put the permeable pavers down because they're they're not permanent. Um, and I I um, just wanted to make it a safer space to have out there this summer. I, I'm, I've been in talks with Peter on the planning board and I know we're yet to go in front of them. So I know that this is only something that right now we have under the emergency order. And I um, understand that it's possible that it's not a permanent thing, but the pavers are, are there right now. Not all the work is done yet. Um, I, you know, cause I, all the rest of the work has to, obviously I have to see what needs to be done. So. Well, I appreciate that answer. And I, I understand uh, better at this time. Uh, I have one more question, Joe. And Go then, ahead, Steve. Um, the serving of, you know, we're going to approve the expanded footprint uh, for the serving of alcohol. Um, now, are you going to have a policy that you need to be eating in that space and not just consuming alcohol? Is, are you, I'm sorry, are you asking that to me? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, no, that's you. okay. Yeah, you have. I I believe that's a, a rule that it's there's no bars outdoor bars allowed. So it, it has to be seated table so food and beverage. Yes, yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Any additional uh, questions from uh, Kate? Before I go on, does that answer some of your questions, Kate? Probably not thoroughly, but. Um, no, I, I just extremely disappointed how it worked out, but I'll go to the planning board hearing. Okay. And what I would Great recommend um, moving forward, if we know we're going to have some more of these, I know Mozzie might be looking at something, might, Las Cobos might be looking at something. I know it's a two-step process. They have to get approval from us in regards to being able to do the liquor out there and then the planning board process. So, um you know, let's just make sure we're aware of, of that timing and that the business is aware that they not, you know, I think it's great that they put the, you know, the pavers out there already, certainly under the emergency order, they can continue to do that. Um, but if they're looking to make a permanent change, you know, like with TJ's, they, uh, they came before us and I, I mean, theirs was in their parking lot. So I don't know that the, it was the same kind of issues in front of the planning board. So I would say on a case by case basis, if there's a major change that we make sure that the planning board is looped in and that the public's aware, that's all. So would you like to make sure that from the process from, from this point forward that they go to the planning board first? No, 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 no I don't know. That doesn't make sense because they, you know, the, the restaurants need to know if they're gonna be able to serve liquor out there. I understand that. Okay. So no, they should come to us first, but we just wanna make sure the restaurants are aware that they have to get through that, the planning board process as well. Right, so just tonight's vote does not mean that they can go out next week and start serving food and alcohol. They still have to go. Well, through. no, I think they can because of the emergency orders that are going on. Well, as, a, right. as what a, we're they, doing, what we're doing is making a permanent change to their well, liquor license to include that outdoor area. That's what the vote is tonight. Okay. So and, under and the that, emergency order, they can do it, but the permanent change and the permanent of the the bricks and all that staying after the emergency order that has to be approved by the planning board, which which expires August 2022. April Something like that. April 2022. I think. I'm mean, sorry, April. 2020. Yeah, it's like one is. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, uh, Joe. I just had a question uh, sure. for um, for Lynn. For Lynn about the so. Uh, your plan shows fencing. Is that the rail fencing that we're seeing in the picture or is that? That was existing. Um, I am working with the planning board to potentially have a six foot fence put there. Six feet, wow, yeah, okay. It, would that be kind of a solid fence or? A vinyl, uh, yep, vinyl, vinyl. But, solid but not, not something you would see through necessarily. Right, right. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. To provide some privacy for you. For your, for your patrons as well as for the neighbors in that in that specific oh, area. Right. Yes. Yep. Oh. All right. Any additional questions, comments? I'm talking about the board first, Mark. Okay. Um, Mark, just, you have a question. I'm sorry, Brenda. Go ahead. I didn't see your hand. Um, and I know Kate had had a question about hours and um, that that you were going to be serving outside. Can you um, can you specify that, Lynn? 
Yeah, so I, I would be requesting lunch and dinner till 10 p.m. If, if that's allowed. Okay, all right, thanks. Um, and do you have a hearing date in front of the planning board yet? Um, he said, I believe Thursday they meet and he said the third Thursday in July when we had met Monday, but I haven't received any official no notice yet, so. Okay. okay, I would say, you know, just from my perspective, I, you know, we, we love the idea of being able to support our businesses and, and help them um, through these tough times. We just got to make sure that we, we make sure that the, the process is followed. I wasn't, I, it wasn't clear to me either from the pictures that, that, that things were, had already kind of started um, down the path of making some of these changes. So I appreciate, I appreciate the clarification. I just have one other uh, administrative question that I have, Lynn. Um, last call, 9.30, file outside? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, all right, thank you. Mark, you had a question. Uh, yes, I did, thank you. This is to whom can answer this, this part of it, is um, this is under the emergency uh, laws that's going on, the pandemic emergency laws, this is being passed for, right? No. No, totally different. This is for a permanent request, which will take effect once the uh, emergency uh, order uh, is uh, over and done with uh, in 2022. So, um, can, does this? Because uh, I'm, I'm not fully understanding what's going on, so I'm asking, I'm asking a curious question. I think for throughout the year, rest of this year, and almost two or three months of next year. Is this gonna be an open for business situation in all weather? Uh, that would be up to the owner of the of the business if they want to do it outside. So that's so, Lynn, is that you, yeah, we, weather permitted, right? Right, and even now it's weather permitted and um, we don't have tents or anything like that. So I think we wrapped it up the end of September last year, just based on weather. I can't remember the exact day that we ended it, but um, it would not be through the winter or anything like that. And the last, the last one, I think it must, must be it. Is this going to be all um, designed in the back of the building? Um, it's to the side, side of the building. By 126 itself? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's it. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions? And I'm sorry, I can't see anybody hands that are raised. So those who have the ability to do that, uh, just let me know. No, you're good, anything. Joe. No other questions. Good? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, then at this point in time, I will uh, ask right. uh, deliberation yeah. on the board. Oh, okay. Okay. And then uh, seeing that uh, anybody have any uh, final thoughts or uh, comments before we uh, close the hearing? None. Motion to okay. close the hearing. Do we hear a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, hearing is closed. I'm sorry. Aye. Can I ask a quick question? I apologize. Um, my name is Elena. I um, <clears throat> had a, a, a schedule today at 7.30 for the uh, limousine service. Uh, is that still the plan to be hold on? We will, yes, we're just running a tad late, Elena. Okay, I apologize for interruption. Okay. Thank you. We're getting there. I'm so sorry. I apologize. It's <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, so the vote in front of us is to, is to expand um, on a, for a permanent basis the um, alterations of the premises to create an outdoor patio. I move that we approve the extension of the Ashland Ale House liquor license to include the new patio area as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, I'll do a roll call vote, please. Uh, Kinsman? Aye. Greaves? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Shear? Aye. Mignani? Aye. Now that's 5 0. So, uh, congratulations. Uh, Lynn and uh, good luck. Uh, good luck in front of the planning board. 
and um, we'll uh, we hope that they uh, they approve your 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 your, uh, your request, and you we'll much. see you soon. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All righty. I know we're a little we're a little uh, behind schedule uh, by about ten minutes. So uh, our next hearing is. Uh, 735 uh, Boston VIP Limo Service Inc. Uh, 99 Metropolitan Ave. And I will read the hearing notice. Notice is hereby given that the select board will conduct a hearing regarding an application for a livery license, Boston VIP Limo Service Inc. 99 Metropolitan Ave, Ashland, Mass. 01721. A public hearing will be held on this matter Wednesday, June 16th, 2021 at 7.35 p.m. Parties wishing to be heard in this matter are invited to attend the public hearing by logging into the Zoom meeting. Interested parties who are unable to attend the hearing may submit written comments to the Select Board's office, Town Hall, 101 Main Street, Ashland, Mass, 01721, or by emailing Sue Roby at srobyashlandmass.com. And it's signed by Joseph Mignani, the chair of the select board. Okay. I would entertain a motion to open this hearing. So moved. I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Kinsman? Aye. Shear? Aye. Mitchell? Uh -oh. He waved his hand. So okay, I'm sorry. Grease. Aye. Mignani, aye. Okay. So I I know that um, we just had Elena here. Elena. Would you... And um, I apologize. That's the first time in my life I'm attending such a committee. That's that's quite all right. That's <laughs> all right. We're, uh, we're we're taking this as as we take it in stride. And I apologize for being a little behind schedule. I probably should have just held off on that other meeting and opened up the hearing and suspended it, but we're moving as quickly as we can. Okay, no. Elena, can you tell us uh, about uh, yourself and uh, introduce yourself to the board and the reason for your request? Absolutely. So my name is Elena. I'm uh, the owner of the Boston Executive Limousine Service. That is the company that provides uh, a transportation services to uh, population. And uh, right now we're starting with a single car, but uh, we're hoping to expand and uh, move towards the Boston with the bigger garaging. Um, but thanks to COVID, they interrupted our plans a little bit. Uh, I had a similar company before uh, for uh, almost 10 years. So I do have a quite a good experience. However, last year, the company did not survive the, the consequences of the COVID. So we had to um, sell all the garaging, uh, all the units uh, and the cars and uh, pretty much stop the business. So we're starting from a scratch right now. Okay. Sorry uh, to hear that. <laughs> it's okay. It's always, uh, you know, it's better to start something than just, you know, to mm -hmm. sit flat. Well, we we uh, we applaud you for uh, starting a business during during a pandemic uh, that uh, that shows a lot of courage on your on your on your half. So um, I will open it up uh, to uh, discussion uh, with the uh, with the board members. Uh, but before I do that, I do have to ask Sue Roby: Did we receive any correspondence uh, pro or con uh, regarding this uh, request? We did not. Okay, thank you. All right, then I will open it up uh, to uh, the board who has any questions. Any board member have any questions? I don't see it. Stephen. So, uh, Elena, well, number one, uh, good luck with your, your new, new enterprise. Thank you. Uh, so just a couple questions to clarify. You only have one vehicle that you're employing, correct? Yes, right now, one vehicle. And, uh, and you're the sole employee. Uh, as well, yeah. Uh, but your goal is to expand as you, uh, as business hopefully improves for you. That is correct. Okay. Uh, now, have you have you uh, polled your 
your neighbors uh, regarding your business? I did not. Uh, and the reason I didn't really uh, interrupt it, my neighbors so far, because uh, the business itself is not going to have any impact on the outside or any uh, areas that uh, near to my neighbors. So the only uh, appearance of the, uh, of the business in Ashland is that the car will be parked on my driveway. That's it. So we're doing business mostly in town. Um, so it's just for me to come home and park the, <laughs> park the car. Yeah. yeah, it sounds, it sounds the way you describe it, it sounds low impact. So, so thank you for that and good luck. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? Rob? Uh, yeah, so Elena, um, so are you, Will you be driving the vehicle or do you have other employees or partners? No, for now it's myself. I really hope to expand the garage in the nearest future because mm -hmm. based on my previous experience, we, uh, we were pretty big. We had uh, almost 10 cars and the garaging was, uh, was a need them. Uh, but right now, just me, I'm gonna start from scratch, okay. gonna have one car and uh, sure. hopefully we'll grow. <laughs> Okay, so so you're located in a residential neighborhood, and yep. I think so. If you have one vehicle, uh, I, I'd say that's probably not a not an issue. But as you expand, are you planning to move the vehicle somewhere else to Absolutely. another Absolutely, yes. Okay. There's no no way I'm going to plan to keep uh, more than one vehicle at my driveway. I do uh, plan to you know rent a proper office with a proper parking spaces. So. Um, not okay, gonna have like a a train of vehicles parked on the side of the street. All right, good. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Any other uh, questions or comments from uh, board members? My questions were both answered. I just want to say good luck, Elena. I hope you can build it back to what it was pre-pandemic. Good <laughs> Thank luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, um, any uh, any, other questions any additional uh, comments or questions from uh, from the public? that are uh, listening in. Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it's self-explanatory what this what this is. And she is a like an Uber service and she's the driver of the Uber car. It's so back and forth and probably her phone's gotta be busy off the hook, hopefully. And she, that's how she's gonna expand. So uh, I'm saying the residential neighborhood and one car and if she can expand, she's got to come back and go for for bigger. So I was just saying, yeah, good luck to her. And um, if the if the car doesn't break down or gets over the gas, she's going to do well. Thank you. No, I, I'm really keeping fingers crossed that car is not going to uh, break down. But the car that I purchased is a 2020 uh, Cadillac Escalade um, on a like fully certified, so should not <laughs> at least falling apart. <laughs> let's let's hope it doesn't. Let's hope it doesn't. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, at this point, I will uh, close the public hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Just a hand vote is fine Aye. for me at this Aye. point in time. Okay. That's great. I will entertain a motion to allow for uh, a limo license application for 99 Metropolitan Ave, Boston VIP limo service. So moved. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Uh, I set, do I have a second? Second. Okay. We'll start with Brandy. Aye. Yolanda. Aye. Steve. Aye. Rob. Aye. Mignani, aye. Five zero. Elena, good luck to you. The very best of luck. Thank you so much. Have and a great and the rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you again. Bye. Okay, moving quickly along, and I know we're uh, we're about 10, 10 minutes behind. Uh, we have another hearing at seven forty-five, and this is an Eversource pool hearing, uh, a grant of location, which is thirty-six plus or minus feet of conduit on Douglas Road, which will provide service to 12 Pond Street. And I will read the uh, hearing. Legal notice. 
Notice is hereby given that the select board will conduct a hearing regarding an application for a grant of location to install approximately 36 plus or minus feet of conduit on Douglas Road. The application is NSTAR Electric Company, DBA, Eversource Energy, Douglas Road, WO num uh, number 4873161, Ashland, Mass, 01721. A public hearing will be held on the matter on Wednesday, June 16th, 2021 at 7.45 p.m. Parties wishing to be heard in this matter are invited to attend the public hearing by logging into Zoom meeting. Interested parties who are unable to attend the hearing may submit written comments to the Select Board's office, Town Hall 101 Main Street, Ashland, Mass, 01721, or by emailing Sue Roby at sroby at ashlandmass.com. Signed by myself, select board. Okay. Um, we have a letter of intent uh, requested. Uh, is Rich available this evening? Is he here? Hi, this is Joanne Callender. Joanne? Okay. Representing Eversource. Hi, Joanne. Um, How are you? Very well, thank you. I'm actually sitting in the town hall's uh, parking lot because I didn't get the memo that we went back to Zoom. <laughs> Sorry about but that. Here I, no worries. Here I am. So as, as you stated, we are seeking a grant of location to install approximately 36 feet of conduit into Douglas Road. And of course, this is to provide service to 12 Pond Street. Okay. Everybody's had the opportunity to look at the information that was uh, provided in our packet. Joe, did we open up the hearing? Uh, I thought I did. Yes, we did. We did. Okay. Just making sure. Okay, thank you for reminding me. Uh, so Joe, we... I had a couple of questions for Joanne. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead, Yolanda. So Joanne, this conduit is going in the road? Yes. Okay. And then is Eversource then not just putting a patch on it, but can we get them to do a curb to curb repave? I can certainly bring that to uh, my supervisor for approval. Okay if that's what the, the town is looking for, yes. Okay, because it's it's fairly down, it's, you know, 36 feet seems like it's not very long, but, you know, looking at where it is, to have that down the middle of the road and just have a patch come the winter could be could be a mess. Um, so, and then it's plugging into the back of the building or where is it plugging into on Pond Street? Oh, let me take a look at the sketch here. I can't really the, see from this. The plan. Um, From the plan, honestly, I can't see that either. Um, it goes into the building. Correct. Um, it looks, it does look like the back of it though, if I'm looking at the plan where I see Douglas Road and 12 Pond Street, uh, okay. it looks like it's coming into the back, but I'm honestly, I'm not 100% sure I can find that information out for you and get back okay. to you. That'd be great, thank you. That was all I had, Joe. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, uh, concerns, comments? I have some questions. Go ahead, Brandy. Um, thank you. So, Joanne, um, how long would the will this um, will this process take? How long can the neighbors expect um, EverSource to to be there with the conduit? Right. So, normally under fifty feet of conduit, we normally do that in one day. Okay. And the existing neighbors wouldn't lose power. No, they shouldn't lose any power. Um, and we always provide a police detail so we wouldn't close down the street either. We would definitely leave one lane of traffic open. Okay, great. Thank you. Those were, uh, those were my questions. Thanks. Thank you, Brandy. Good questions. Rob, Steve? I'm good. Thank you. I'm all, I'm all set. Thank set. you. Thank you. Uh, my questions were already uh, answered. Uh, Brandy and Yolanda both had similar questions and concerns that I had, so um, I'm good with that. Uh, Sue, I will ask, uh, did we receive any uh, correspondence pro or con regarding this request from uh, Eversource? We did not. Okay, thank you. Are there any um, residents uh, participating virtually who have any comments that would like to uh, come forth, come forward and ask or provide information for us at this time? I don't see anybody raising a hand. Okay. 
Uh, seeing that we have no further uh, questions or comments, I will uh, ask that the uh, hearing be closed at this time. Motion to close the hearing. Do I have a second? I could. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. All right. At this point, then, I will take a vote. I would like... I move that we allow Eversource to put in the conduit as presented on Douglas Road and a request that they do a full pavement of the road, not just a patch. From curb to curb. Curb to curb. Curb to curb. Any seconds? Second. Okay. I'll take Brandy on that one. So all those in favor of the motion, please uh, say aye. I will go voice vote. I'll stop backwards. Rob. Aye. Steve Mitchell. Aye. Yolanda. Aye. Brandy. Aye. Mignani. Aye. Okay. That's 5-0. Congratulations, Joanne. Uh, you can tell your folks you can lay that conduit. Thank you so much. That's just a question for Yolanda, though. Do you want yeah. me to get back to you to tell you exactly where yeah. we're connecting to the house? Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. You could just send it either to my direct email or all the select board or, or, to, or to Susan and she'll pass it on to me. Will do. Thank you so great. much. Thank Have a great evening. evening. You too. What? Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is the uh, consent agenda. Now, because we don't have it up on the board, I, uh, sh I should read a these all off. Is that correct? Well, we, we, we can put it up on the board, Joe. Will you? You're tired of hearing my voice, huh? Already. No. Um, let's see. Just so everybody can see it. There you go. All righty. I believe you wanted to pull um, the uh, new hires from that. And then so at that point you would just- I don't know, uh, if, the, I don't know if the people asked to have them move, but just to discuss them afterwards. Yes. Right, well, I think it was just to discuss I, them afterwards. I yeah. move but, that we pass, that we approve the consent agenda as presented on the screen. Second. second. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That's 5 0. Uh, consent agenda has been passed unanimously. And at this point, um, I will ask. Um, okay. As soon as we get our screen back up. Okay. There we go. All right. Cool. All right, you wanted me to just go into Courtney? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, please, Michael. So um, upon the departure of CARA, we looked at you know, reconfiguring some of the hours of the position that was there, as well as the position of a food pantry coordinator, uh, just because we've seen some increased need. And uh, so we had now have a case manager position there, as opposed to an assistant director. Um, after a pretty thorough interview process, uh, we decided to um, offer Courtney Laughlin the position of case manager. Um, if you can look through her, um, her you, you don't see her resume in front of you, but she's got um, extensive experience um, as a student working in youth and family services and family services um, all together. So she is uh, just recently a graduate of Marywood University with a master's of social work. And prior to that, she um, went to the University of Scranton, where she received her bachelor's degree in counseling and human services. Very good. Thank you. Was there any other uh, one, Rob, that you wanted to? Uh... Oh, just a word about the new dispatcher. You know, okay. Actually, the new dispatcher decided not to take the position. We just, we just found out. Oh. Oh. OK. Was that just recent, Michael? Fairly recent, yes. Okay. Well, uh, part of the consent agenda is accepting the uh, resignations of uh, two 
longtime volunteers for the town, and I would like to uh, thank Carol Love uh, for her uh, countless hours of volunteering on the Council of Aging, and to uh, KG Cariana, who uh, moved out of Ashland, and I'm sure uh, he's heartbroken on that move. We are as well. And I want to thank him um, for all his uh, years of dedicated service to the Board of Health and to other boards that he has uh, sat on throughout the year. So thank you very much, KG. Uh, we hope we get to see you soon again. Yeah, hopefully he'll be back soon. So. Okay. Joe, yeah, before, we, before we move off the consent agenda, I know Beth is here. Yep. I was curious if, if she could say a couple words about this co-working space, because I'm curious about it. Good. You just you were you were, you were reading my mind. I was going to ask her to speak on that. So thank you, Brandy. Beth. Sure. Yeah. Um, um, so the application was put forward. Um, oh, sorry. Should I go? Yep. Okay. So the application was put forward through the Economic Development Advisory Group. Um, they reviewed the application. We discussed in length co-working. Um, I'm sure most of you know that I've been working very hard over the last few years to try to bring a co-working space into Ashland. As I know, they are very popular. Um, the pandemic definitely sort of changed the I guess the progression of how co-working spaces are being used or or not. Um, so I think that is still being decided. Um, but I know I know personally of a friend of mine who went into a large office and now they've downsized and they take over an entire floor of an old WeWork. So I think that um, you know this concept is still very much um, in important to communities. Um, and I think, you know, I always say what they can do in big cities, we can do in small towns. And I think there's a need for this in our town of Ashland. Um, there's a lot of people working from home. If you look at our business list, um, you know, a lot of those are home-based businesses and a lot of people want to get out of their homes. Um, they've been stuck in them for a year and a half. So I've been working closely with Steve Greenberg. Um, we've been talking and looking at other spaces um, where we could possibly put a co-working space. We've done a survey of the community, of the business community to see what the need is. There is definitely a need out there. So if all of the people that apply, that answered the survey that we put out a few months ago, we would fill this space in about five minutes. Um, I know there's a lot of movement with other businesses and developments in town. Um, this would provide a space for smaller businesses that can't afford those larger rents. Um, so it's just a great opportunity. Steve has done a great job to put together the format, the website, um, the programming that's needed in order to sign into this and be a member of a co-working space, um, as well as all the furniture. So this grant would actually help provide to this um, applicant to open the space. So it will be helping him furnish it with desks, chairs, filing cabinets, a conference table, um, printer. Um, so everything needed to actually get this up and running. And it will be right downtown. Um, we're working with the bagel table very closely as well to make it work for them as well. Parking will be at town hall for anyone that does um, become a member of this co-working space. So they will have to walk a block. Um, but that's part of the gig. So um, that I, I hope sums it up for you, um, but I'm excited at the opportunity. Good. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate that. Any other uh, questions for Beth? No? Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. I was kind of curious as to where it was going to be, too. So it's not that not that far, right downtown. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. I'm going to head off to uh, old and new business. Um, and I will hand this over to uh, our town manager, Mr. Herbert. Vote to award and execute the bond documents. All right, Mr. Herbert. Thank you, Chair Mignani. Um, so this is the agenda item that we all uh, kind of dread because you have to read the whole thing. I believe Rob, you get the honor of doing that this year or this time. Um, but it's actually for a very, very important reason. Um, we went out to market for both the bonds for our public safety building project, and then also the notes, which are essentially the short-term uh, bonds, they're actually called bands, bond anticipation notes, to help fund the Mendez school process. 
So a couple of things that were really, really good about, um, about this particular sale is we were reaffirmed our AAA credit, credit rating, I should say, with um, a lot of good language about our financial policies and our financial discipline and how that worked in our favor during the pandemic. Um, so again, uh, we were reaffirmed our AAA rating with, um, with a stable outlook. So when we went out to market, we had the benefit of having that uh, better rating. When we got our bids back in, and we had seven bids in for um, the public safety building, we got uh, the lowest one that we had was uh, with a true interest cost. The true interest cost equaled 2.36%, which was a little bit less than what we had anticipated and what we had projected, which was like uh, 2.56%. So we did a little bit better there than what we'd anticipated. So that means we were on target with our estimation of, I believe it was like $91 per year. And with the bond, uh, and then with the bond anticipation notes, um, we received also a very favorable rate there. Those will have to be renewed each year until we get to the point um, where we're actually ready to, to bond out the full project. So a lot of great work done by Brittany, Cindy, um, Brianne, who works for Unibank. Um, they really put all of this stuff together. And um, I'm, I'm excited about A, that the projects are moving forward, and B, that they're costing what we had expected them to cost. OK. Thank you. Rob, are you ready to? Uh... Do any so, reading at this point? Yeah, we're we ready to read this vote of the select board um, that Susan was so nice to send to me. Thank she you. She sent Susan. it only to you, by the way. I just want to let yeah. you know because nobody else has it. No one. Well, you have to listen very carefully then. Okay. <laughs> and you I want believe to... I, there's a, 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 a bit of a chart on here, and I believe I have to read the chart as well. Is that correct? The it is year. Correct. Oh, boy. So, all right. So this uh, document is titled Vote of the Select Board, and it reads as follows. Uh, I, the clerk of the select board of the town of Ashland, Massachusetts, the town, certify that at a meeting of the board held June 16, 2021, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which a quorum was present, the following votes were unanimously passed, all of which appear upon the official record of the board in my custody voted that we hereby determine in accordance with general law chapter 70B that the amount of the cost of the David Mendez elementary school construction project authorized by a vote of the town passed on January 23rd, 2021, article two, not being paid by the school facilities grant is $57,116,813. And we hereby approve of the issuance of notes and bonds not to exceed such amount under said general law chapter 70B. Further voted that the sale of the 26,165,000 general obligation public safety building bonds of the town dated June 24th, 2021, the bonds to Robert W. Baird and Company incorporated at the price of $27,498,330.68 and accrued interest, if any, is hereby approved and confirmed. The bond shall be payable on May 15th of the years and in the principal amounts and bear interest at their respective rates as follows. This is a chart, uh, the, each, each is titled the year, the amount, the interest rate, um, and it goes from 2022 to 2051. And year 2000. 22 was 575,000 at a 5% interest rate, 2023, 525,000 at 5% interest rate, 2024, 550,000 at 5% interest rate, 2025, 580,000 at 5% interest rate, 2026, 605,000 at 5%, 2027, 635,000 at 5%. 2028, 670,000 at 5%, 2029, 
2029, 700,000 at 5%. 2030, 740,000 at 5%. 2031, 775,000 at 3%. 2032, 800,000 at 3%. 2033, 820,000 at 3%. 2034, 845,000 at 2%. 2035, 865,000 at 2%. 2036, 880,000 at 2%. 2037, 900,000 at 2%. 2038, 915,000 at 2%. 2039, 935,000 at 2%. 2041, 1,925,000 at 2%. 2046, 5,170,000 at 2.125%. And 2051 at 5,755,000 at 2.250%. And then uh, further voted that the bonds maturing on May 15th, 2041 May 15th, 2046, and May 15th, 2051, each a term bond so shall be subject to mandatory redemption are mature as follows. Term bond due May 15th, 2041, uh, year 2040, amount 955,000, year 2041, 970,000 is an asterisk by 2041, which indicates that is the final maturity. Uh, term bond due, uh, the next page is term bond due May 15th, 2046. Again, there's columns a year in the amount, 2042, 990,000, 243, 1 million, 10,000, 2044, 1 million, 35,000, 2045, 1 million, 55,000, 2046 with an asterisk, this is the final maturity, 1,080,000. Uh, next group is term bond due May 15th, 2051, year 2047, 1,100,000, 1, year 2048, 1,125,000, 1, year 2049, 1,150,000, year 2050, 1,175,000. Uh, year 2051, final maturity, 1,205,000. Wow. So further voted to approve the sale of a 24,519,002% general obligation bond anticipation note of the town dated June 24th, 2021 and payable August 8th, 2022 the note to Morgan Stanley and Company, LLC, at par and accrued interest, if any, plus a premium of $514,653.81. Uh, further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the bond, the preparation distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated June 2nd, 2021, and a final official statement dated June 9th, 2021, the official statement, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, being hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that in connection with the market and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated June 2nd, 2021, and a final official statement dated June 9th, 2021, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, being hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that the bond shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town upon such terms and conditions as are set forth in the official statement. Further voted that the town treasurer and the select board be and hereby are, author are authorized to execute and deliver continuing and significant events disclosure undertakings in compliance with SEC rule 15C2-12 in such forms as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the bonds and notes as applicable for the benefit of the holders of the bonds and the notes from time to time. Page three, this is the last page. Further voted that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post-issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient, or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain 
the tax exempt status of the bonds and notes and to comply with relevant security laws. Further voted that any certificates or documents re relating to the bonds and notes, collectively the documents, may be executed in several counterparts, each of which shall be regarded as an original, all of which shall constitute one and the same document. Delivery of an executed counterpart of a signature page to a document by electronic mail and a PDF file or by other electronic transmission shall be as effective as delivery of a manually executed counterpart signature page of such document. Oh, and electronic signatures on any of the documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purpose of the documents and all matters relating thereto having the same legal effect as original signatures. Further voted that each member of the select board, the town clerk and the town treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such action and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes were taken in a meeting open to the public that no vote was taken by secret ballot and a notice stating the place, date, time and agenda for the meeting, which addenda which agenda included the adoption of the above votes was filed with the town clerk and a copy thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours in or on the municipal building that the office of the town clerk is located or if applicable in accordance with an alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the attorney general as set forth in 940 CMR 29.032B. At least 48 hours, not including Saturday, Sundays, and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decision in connection with the sale of bonds or the notes were taken in executive session, all in accordance with general law at chapter 38, sections 88 to 25 as amended. Dated June 16th, 2021, um, and is a place for a signature of the clerk of the select board. That's the reading of the um, of the bond uh, certificate, Mr. Chair. Nicely done, Mr. Shear. Appreciate that. Take a break. Okay. I did say, you know, in terms of discussion, I think it's interesting that you can accept PDFs and uh, electronically uh, scanned uh, documents, which I'm still running around giving people wet signatures for contracts. So I think this is an interesting uh, advance. So, yeah. so Michael, do we still need to come in and sign or can we just have it done? No, I, I think you'll need to come in and sign these. Okay. And remember, these are a lot. These are like each of the, right. Each bond has with a coupon rate has a different signature. Okay. Now, do we have to take a vote on this as well? Okay. So do I hear a motion to accept the two bonds should we vote them? Sorry to interrupt. Then, Should we vote them separately, Michael? Should we do a vote to accept the Mendez for the total amount, and then do a separate vote to vote to approve the public safety? I believe what Rob uh, said was actually the motion. Yeah, that that's was the motion. So that's, you know, that's that's the whole motion. So, all the further it, voted. Yeah, We're voting on all these things. I read. Okay. Second the motion. Okay, so the motion was read, seconded by Steve. I'll do a voice vote. Uh, Does anybody want a second reading before we go ahead? <laughs> Don't ask that. <laughs> you may not, you may regret it. Okay, I'll do it alphabetical, and this time I'll get the alphabetical uh, order right. Miss Greaves. Aye. Miss Kinsman. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Shear. Aye. Myself. Aye. Okay, that's five zero, uh, been approved. So the two bonds have been uh, approved and voted on. So we need to now come to Sue's office and sign wet documents uh, sooner than later, right? Yeah. Okay, you're, you're well, muted, Sue. Tomorrow. tomorrow. I need everyone to come in tomorrow. Okay, all right, the boss has spoken. Everybody come in tomorrow and sign. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Sue. Appreciate that. All right. Nicely done too, by the way, Rob. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, next on old business is discuss the COVID-related reopening plan and including meeting protocols. 
And for those who are watching uh, via Facebook and uh, a Zoom uh, participants, today was kind of confusing because we really weren't sure how we were going to do this. Um, we were waiting and we were anticipating uh, some, so, some sort of uh, recognition from the governor's office. Uh, and again, it should have been, Yolanda made a very good point uh, earlier uh, this evening that it should have been considered last week and should have been voted on and approved. So that way we weren't running out. Many, many towns were running around, uh, not exactly sure what they needed to do. Uh, and we're, we were torn in between going virtual or having an uh, in-person meeting. And uh, there were still a lot of people still kind of leery about meeting in person. And I can understand that and appreciate that. So uh, I'm thankful that, you know, the governor signed into uh, effect uh, an extension to all the emergency orders, which is, which is, which is good for us. So this gives us time to come up and set up, set protocols and things that we need to do uh, for future meetings, and hopefully we can get something done. And and I'm I'm probably pushing the envelope a little bit for our July meetings. I, you know I, I I'm trying. I hope it can happen. If it doesn't, then we'll continue doing Zoom, but. Uh, I would like to see, uh, you know, in-person meetings or some sort of uh, hybrid meetings in person and uh, virtual particip uh, citizens participation uh, via uh, via Zoom or some other some other means of uh, IT uh, ex extensions on that. So, uh, Michael, what would you like to uh, tell us about what we should what we should be thinking about for um, reopening the reopening plans and protocols well reopening I, I think it has pretty much been discussed and we're, you know we've moved forward with that um, i think a lot of it now comes down to how the board wants to conduct meetings or give guidance to other boards on how you you think they should conduct meetings um, you know as you mentioned the governor extended the ability to have remote meetings so in one way that that's really really good it doesn't mandate us to do that, so um, we can still we can have live meetings if you would like. Um, my plan is to still maintain two Zoom accounts at this point in time um, for the town to use. But um, working on the hybrid situation, it, you know, we had a couple of meetings this this week where we tried. Um, where we tried to do some kind of hybrid approach. It didn't work out too well, so we got, we got a ways to go. Um, but the next agenda item is adopting remote participation. You know, my suggestion is we go back to live meetings after adopting remote participation. And if people are able, people need to participate from home or from wherever, they can do it via the remote participation model. Okay, I'm for that. I will uh, open it up to uh, each uh, member to uh, give their uh, point of view. Stephen. So, uh, you know, as Michael uh, stated, we're not mandated to continue to uh, provide Zoom meetings. I happen to advocate that we should uh, go to back to, to live meetings. Uh, I don't want to minimize anybody's concerns about uh, you know health-related concerns. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we're back in the world, whether we're going out to restaurants or whether we're going out to all sorts of activities indoors. Um, I, some, some boards and committees are already doing live meetings. Uh, I attended several Council on Aging meetings that have been uh, live rather than Zoom. So, you know, from my perspective, I think the sooner that we get back to, to live meetings, the better. Uh, you know, I, I think the uh, and again, I don't want to minimize the concerns about uh, uh, health related issues, but, you know, I don't want us to be uh, considering Zoom as a more of a, of an, a convenience rather than a health related action. You know, I know it's convenient and I, I, I advocate as well. I know the rest of the board does for getting to a hybrid system that works well. Uh, 
I've been to a couple of meetings that, that we've done live with, with, with Zoom participants. It's still, it's still clunky. Uh, so, you know, hopefully we, we get to that point soon, but, you know, I think for our board, I'd like to see us get back to live meetings as soon as possible. Okay, thank you, Steve. Yolanda? I, I concur with Steve in that I think, you know, it's time to get back to in-person, but I definitely want us to look at the hybrid possibility so that we can have mm -hmm. participants come in remotely. Uh, I think there are residents who, not only for health concerns, but for them sitting in the meeting room, it's a little more difficult, either from a hearing perspective or from a disability perspective or from a timing perspective, that if we can still have residents participating via Zoom, via that hybrid model, I think it will increase, you know, it will have our increased participation continue. I think we've seen at many of our meetings where there's been issues, people have participated via Zoom and I think we need to support that and get to get to that as quickly as possible. Uh, other communities are doing it. So, I mean, I, I understand, you know, IT or, you know, whatever department's gonna be working on it has been busy but we've been talking about this since January that we knew at some point we were gonna come back and be in person and most likely wanna support a hybrid model. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I've been able to do a few more of my regional meetings because of Zoom. I'm definitely gonna go back to them when they're in person and go be in person. But sometimes that ability, if we can allow people to do that and still participate, I think is something we have to get to as quickly as possible. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, Brandy, I'll, I'll get to you the last row. Sure. Brandy. Uh, so I, I agree. I'm I'm personally ready to to go back in person for meetings. I think that. Um, our meetings in particular would be would be more effective if we're all sitting in the same physical room together. Um, you know, I do, you know, I, I, the whole idea of remote participation, I know it's the next item on the agenda, but the, it's really intertwined. If we do go ahead and we vote in remote participation, does that, my question is, does that negate um, the, the legislation that was, that was signed? Can, can other committees and boards still, um, decide to, to meet completely remotely. Like I, I just wanna make sure that what we decide, how, how it impacts other boards and committees. Yes, they can. I can answer that for you, Brandy. So it does, uh, you know, when we adopt, if we adopt the remote participation, existing participation, um, we have to allow it for all boards and committees in town. Um, this is separate. This is this is remote participation for boards and committees, whereas the governor's executive order is both for participation of boards and committees, but also for the public participation as well. So you got to make that distinction. So it's so I'm just going to use Rob as an example. If Rob is unwilling to attend a live meeting, and the four of us do. By adopting this next agenda item, he will have the ability to either log in via auto, audio or, or video, whatever, whatever the platform is that we use. So, you know, there's a, there's a distinction there that, uh, that I think we should be clear about. Sure. And the public would still have to attend in person. The, the public would still have to attend. And when you say public participation, I mean, they still have access via you know, WACA or by Facebook and so on. But, you know, as, as Yolanda stated earlier, I think, you know, the, the, okay. the, the, we're, we're realizing that, that Zoom allows for a deeper participation and engagement. I think that we're all supportive of. And, and I don't know that remote participation in regards to the governor's orders allows all of us to be doing it the way we are now. And because we're doing it this way, we've included the public. I think that if we decide to go back to in-person, allowing the public to participate remotely, I, I think that is not part of the governor's orders. That is how we want to do our business. Right, that's correct. Yeah, I would agree with you. Yeah. The, gov the governor's order only talks about really 
um, meetings being remote as it relates to the open meeting law. Right. Really? So for the appointed a people or elected officials that represent that committee. And not the participants that are, that are out there, correct. Right. So it sounds like we want to move forward trying to do moving forward with in person, at least for the select board. Correct. Well, wait a minute. So let me, let me, yeah, well, let Rob, me address, Rob's next. Go ahead, address Rob. that. Yeah. Um, so, but Michael, so I just want to understand what the governor's order does or doesn't do regarding this hybrid model we've been discussing. What's our understanding of that? That we can design our own, um, uh, we continue Zoom, but design some kind of hybrid where some people could be in there in person, but other people could participate remotely? Well, the governor's orders gives the board or the committee, whatever public body is meeting, the ability to meet remotely or in person or some combination of both. Okay, that was, that was my understanding. So I got a little confused when someone was saying that the governor's order didn't allow that. Um, okay. Now, what, so I no, what I said, Rob, was the governor's orders allows us to continue to have our meetings via Zoom. Yes. And the public participates, okay? Just like they have been. If we do a Zoom meeting, they can participate. Right. If we decide to go in person, right? But we want to keep the Zoom link open as part of our meeting. My understanding is that is not part of the governor's orders or the legislature. It's just us being able to include them via Zoom. I see. So that would be us process. meeting as usual, but allowing allowing a, 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 a Zoom participant somehow. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And we think that is allowable under the current uh, legislation. This is separate from Steve's remote yeah. participation. Correct. Okay. All right. So, hmm. So I, you know, I, I agree that at some point we should be moving back to business or to physical meetings, but I'm not sure why we need to be in such a hurry about it, especially if we're trying to develop some sort of hybrid participation model. Um, you know, there's, I just, I, I just have seen a lot of benefits for this Zoom platform. And um, I just think we should, you know, give, we should give ourselves some time before we're coming back and develop this hybrid model. Um, Cause I, I just don't see the overwhelming need for hurry for this. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's basically, and it does have, you know, we got some, you know, we did get some feedback from people who find the platform easier to use and it does allow for more pub public participation. So I guess I would just ask that we take a little time, develop these technical systems and make sure they're working right. And then we can move on to the next phase of that. And that we should also, you know, the next item is this remote participation. I think that's a potentially good thing to have. Um, I think also whatever we do, we should give the other boards, you know, I guess, uh, you know, the ability to continue to meet remotely. I think it's a great boon for everybody. You know, I do want to point out that, for example, I'm on the MBTA advisory board. Well, I, I could never have had a significant role in that under the old system, which meant at the transportation building in Boston at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday or whatever they did it. I mean, that was just an insider's game, you know, so, you know, Zoom to Yolanda's point, things like MAPC and these other regional meetings, we've been able to be much more um, effective for our time. So, you know, we wouldn't want them to end Zoom. So, you know, I'm not sure we should be ending it so quickly as well. So, you know, that's my thinking on that. So I would ask that we at least hold off and, and review the technology and the systems and give Mike and um, time to do that. I think we all agree with you, Rob. I mean, we, we all agree that we want to see a workable hybrid system and that we all agree with you know, the benefits of, of having the, the public be able to uh, participate in an easier fashion. Uh, you know, like to me, they're, they're, they're two different arguments uh, or two different, different uh, uh, yes, arguments. And, uh, you know, I don't think that has any bearing on us on this board 
really going back to the way we did business pre-pandemic. I mean, it's, you know, obviously we've seen the benefits of this and we want to pursue that, but I don't think that precludes us from meeting as a board uh, in, in person and, and working uh, you know, in parallel, parallel ways. Well, I guess I would ask. So the next, our next meeting is scheduled for June thirtieth, I believe, if that, if I recall correctly. So, uh, if we were to decide tonight to go back to business as usual, I would think we would, you know, and I, you know, we'd be doing it on June thirtieth. So I don't know if we'd have, you know, made much progress on this hybrid or have those kind of capabilities in place. Mike, I know you wanted to say something. I'm sorry, Steve. Let uh, no, Mike I, I, I just I don't want to necessarily get bogged down in the same conversation that we had last time, which we kind of are. Um, what, where we were at the last meeting was we actually didn't know whether or not these things would be extended or not. Right. The ability to, to be remote. Um, I think if you want to make a decision about what you want to do on June 30th, Specifically, I think you know you can go ahead and make that decision. But I think everybody's in agreement that we're trying to uh, develop some type of hybrid model that would allow the board to meet in person and some in public to meet in person. At the same time, give the ability maybe for a board or committee member or multiple board or committee members to participate in that same meeting remotely, and then also have the public be able to do that remotely. So we're still carrying on that. Um, we're still you know, focused on trying to execute something like that. But um, so I, I just feel like we're kind of in the same discussion as we had at the last meeting. But so, Michael, so what do you, what's your recommendation then? On June 30th? Yeah. Do you want to hold off for a while? That would be my point. Why don't we just hold off? Because I think this model works until we confident about our new system. My, my point would be to, to start in-person meetings on June 30th. And continue working with the IT group to expand yeah. the uh, business participation. Absolutely. I mean, we don't know how long that process is going to take. Hopefully, it's a short process. Um, you know, Yolanda uh, has indicated that other communities are using um, a, a hybrid system. And so I would hope that we'd be able to, uh, to achieve that relatively soon, but we don't know right. at this point. So right. we're not going to speculate, but you know, my, if I were to take a vote right now it would be to support in person on June 30th and, and thereafter. I, I would just, I, I agree with everything that's being said. I, I'd like to go back to in-person meetings with with the uh, added uh, remote participation uh, complex uh, as part of that uh, as part of that vote, um, again, if an individual seems that they are not ready to meet in 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 person, uh, that gives them the opportunity to at least listen or be part of the meeting and take vote and and move on. Now, whether or not citizens feel comfortable coming to a live meeting. That's their choice. That's their choice. Uh, they they can come or they don't have to come. Um, but we want to at least give them the opportunity to have a, a venue for them to 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 participate. And I and, and I know that Zoom has done that. However, it's convenient that way. But we're still trying to work out the knacks of having a live meeting with Zoom. And until such time, I don't know whether or not that participation level uh, is going to work because some people feel you know, well, we were, we were we were trying to log in and we couldn't, and so we weren't able to participate. So no matter what we do, we're, we're, we're not going to appease everybody. So I would love to go back to live meetings, and if people want to attend, they can. If they want to listen via uh, WACA and Facebook or whatever, they can. They can email us, live meetings, and they can email us if they have any specific concerns or questions. I mean, we've done that before, haven't we, Michael? That, you know, if someone comes in on it, we've had, you know, emails that come in or, or comments or uh, messengers that come in type of deal. Yeah, we, we have. I mean, I think the simplest solution here is to just cancel the June 30th meeting and uh, 
Okay, it was a joke, guys. Sorry. Hey, that was a good idea. I'm, I'm um, leaving now. <laughs> I can't believe you just said, suggested that. But that was well, a joke, right? Okay. Um, that was a joke. Well, so, so look, my suggestion is we meet in person on June 30th. Rob, it, if you feel comfortable participating remotely or more comfortable participating remotely, the easiest way to do it would be by phone. Um, and no, I, I, it's it's really not about me. To me, it's about the public process. And we're trying to develop, we've tasted a bit of this Zoom and we see some advantages here. So I think we're all on the same page there. But I'm just saying, okay, June 30th is two weeks away. We're trying to develop a different model. Why don't we give ourselves some time to do it? I just don't see the urgency. Our next scheduled meeting is like July 21st, depending on what we our needs are so that's um i would just ask why don't we tell people we're going to stay on zoom and then at least for the next meeting and while we develop this system and you know we can discuss it at our next meeting that would be you know just my preference so I, I think connor's I got connor, connor has his hand up yeah i think he's gonna explain i, I can't that. speak go ahead connor hi so um i'm not sure if uh the town has other IT people working on this in addition to Waka, but um, just from the technical side of it, um, I think going back on June 30th is a realistic possibility, but I think a lot of things could go wrong. And the last thing that we want to do from a broadcast perspective is not be able to produce a meeting in the sense that there's going to be uh, like it's the main thing that we're dealing with is audio issues like um echoing essentially from the speakers into the zoom meeting and then that just creates a feedback loop and then we won't be able to put out a broadcast and like whether that would extend into like open meeting law violations because people can't participate i'm not sure but um i would just stress that it's going to be a lot of growing pains because we are working on a ton of solutions here at WACA. And until we get all of you guys in there to hold a meeting, I don't think that we're gonna be able to replicate it because the more people that we have in the Board of Selectmen room, um, the more potential audio sources could mess up the, the product essentially. So I think on the whole, I would just ask that you bear with us. And um, if you want to go back on, on June 30th, that's totally up to you guys. And we'll try to have a system ready, but we can't promise that it won't be the optimal solution or that it will even turn out as, as perfect as we want it to, because a lot of things could go wrong. It'll be clunky. Yeah, that's, to do, I was going to say to sketchy. Yeah. I was going to say sketchy, but clunky works too. Okay. Well, why don't we just you, why don't we decide that maybe July twenty first is the day? Maybe if we have a date to work, because if we don't have a if we don't have a date, a target date, it's we're just going to have the same conversation again. Oh. So I would say if you know the the twenty first is you know we've got quite some time between now five and weeks away. If we can't yeah. figure it out oh. between now and then, then something's wrong. Right. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's not that simple. It's, it's, it's not, I don't want to set us up for failure here, but um, I think Connor is hundred percent right. We're going to have to try a few iterations of this before we get to a place where we feel like everybody's being able to, to do what we want them to be able to do. Um, but I think the idea of uh, uh, July 21st, this is when we're going to go live live meetings and we're going to do our hybrid approach as best as possible and we can just okay. do that it would be okay so is, is brandy you want to make a motion to that effect i think that works sure. um i'll make a motion for the select board to um plan to go back to live in-person meetings in the select board room in town hall as of july 21st 2021 that sound about right? With that's, the hybrid model. Right. With, with, with the hybrid model. With the hybrid model. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor will do a voice vote. Uh, Yolanda. Oh. 
Uh, that's okay. Yolanda's aye. Aye. Brandy. Aye. Steve. Aye. Rob. Aye. Mignani, aye. Okay, so it's 5-0, July 21st. Come hella high water, we're going to go live. Yeah. Let's be ready for it. Yolanda, was it Pembroke or Peabody? Peabody. That it was Peabody. Peabody. Okay. They were doing it as of last year in the in August 2020. Okay. Hybrid models, yeah. hybrid meetings. Okay. I do so, want to note one thing, Mr. Chair. We, we are going to continue to monitor the status of COVID-19 pandemic. And, of course, anything that could be happening in the outside world may change our plans. Oh, I, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if the governor, you know, extends other matters or uh, says there's another state of an emergency, hopefully we don't ever have to do that again. But if it happens, we always have to follow what the governor uh, orders. Well, not just the governor, but if we're sensing issues, then, you know, we should just be prepared to adjust to it. That's all. Well, I, I understand that, Rob, but, you know, we can't uh, we can't hide ourselves in a closet either. We have to. No, no, I'm not saying that, but. We're we're hoping that it's, we're hoping that things are going to continue in a positive direction. That's all I'm saying. If, okay, if they're I, not, I, I, I we should keep our options open. That's all. No, and, no. And if I could just add one other thing, Joe. Sure. That this is what we're deciding to do because of the orders that have now been passed by the governor. Every other committee can decide how they're going to move forward. Correct. Right. They Correct. Don't, we're they not, don't we're have not speaking to come to in them. person. They don't have to come right. to town hall. Right. They can continue. Oh, that's a good point. Zoom we should make that they, clear. Right. Yeah. So this is right. this is the select board deciding that for our committee, we're going to start back to in-person meetings on July 21st, ideally with the hybrid model. Mm -hmm. right. But other committees do not have to do that. They can decide to stay remote because of what was passed by the governor today from the legislature, that they can continue to meet remotely until next spring. Yep. 2022. Is that yep. everyone's understanding? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So like they would potentially hold a vote and decide what they want to do. At or just keep doing what they're doing. I'll keep what they're doing, they, right. They don't have to, I mean, yeah. okay. they don't have to take a vote. They could just, they're allowed Michael, to keep do doing see, what we're doing. Yeah. You see any issues there, Michael, in terms of administration or? or I just don't. As long as we keep a Zoom account, a couple of Zoom accounts for boards and committees to use, I don't. Right. Okay. okay. That sounds good. All right, so are we done beating ahead uh, a dead horse? Okay. I thought that was a useful conversation. It was useful, but we also had that conversation uh, a couple of weeks ago too. So, well, so we don't have to, so we we don't have to re revisit it, so. it again. Yeah. All right. Next on our agenda: uh, discussion and vote on remote participation. Yeah, this uh, this has come up several times before. Uh, for the board and of course this became something that was put on the front burner when it looked like remote participation or uh, remote meetings were going to expire um, under the governor's executive orders. But uh, the board has always been interested in um, adopting um, Massachusetts code, it's 940 CMR 29.10 which allows for remote participation in, in certain circumstances um, under the open meeting law regulation. Um, it's got a number, number of different rules that you have to follow. So first, permissible reasons for remote participation are personal illness, personal disability, emergency, military service, and geographic distance. Um, the way the board would adopt it, ooh, we got bad feedback. Yeah. Yes. Something coming from your mic, Michael. Technical issues. Uh oh. Is it coming from my mic? Yes. Yes. Oh. It's not too bad, though. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, Seems mm -hmm. to stop now. <laughs> we'll see for how long, right? Um, so for local governments, the board, the select board, authorizes remote participation by simple majority vote. Um, I should also point out that this authorization not just applies to the select board, but it applies to all the other boards and committees in town too. So, you know, I think you can and, think of this and as- And we also get to decide if we allow the public to remote, to participate remotely as well. No, no, no. It, 
This is just for community. If a public body chooses to allow individuals who are not members of the public body to participate remotely in a meeting, it may do so without following the open meeting laws, remote participation procedures. Okay. I'm reading it from the information. Wait, the information that was in your packet, Yolanda? I didn't have any information in my packet. Yeah, no, it wasn't about in the packet. This. I think it was. Uh... Yeah. This is, Steve, this was the information. Um, this is, I don't know, whatever the guide is. Hold on. Open meeting law guide. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Section page 15, public participation. No, nope, no. Nope, so how did you, how did you remote say? Remote participation. Because my understanding Page 13. That, okay. So they, the regulations do not prohibit towns from passing bylaws or policies that restrict or eliminate the use of remote participation by public bodies. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it says, okay, it says here that you cannot do so without following the, okay, I stand corrected. It may do so without following the open meeting laws, remote participation procedures. Okay, not that answers that. So what does that mean? Um, so citizens can choose to can, call in? It mean, Well, no, it means we have to vote as to if we wanna allow remote participation for ourselves. And that yeah. would then apply to all boards and committees in town. And then we also get to decide if we want to allow remote participation by the public hmm. for all boards and committees. Well, what it says are individuals who are not members of the public body. So right. you know, uh, that may mean if we had a, uh, a consultant. As well. Right, if, if we had a bond salesman uh, we had an Eversource person that needed to participate. So I'm not sure, and we should probably get some clarity on that. I'm not quite sure if that means the public in general, all yep. the public. Mm. Huh. Good point, Stephen. All right. So... <clears throat> Do we want to hold off on this vote or do we want to take this vote and then get a clarification on the citizens participation aspect of it? No, I, I think we should vote on this, Joe. It's, it's really a, a backup, uh, I think, in terms of uh, how we allow uh, or we get clarity on that. That's, that's a separate issue. I think this is more important relative to board members, board and committee members being able to part, participate if they are unable to physically attend. And this okay. gives them the ability to do so. All right. I, I would say two things. One, we typically, if we're gonna do a new, um, accept a new bylaw or a new, you know, something like this, we typically talk about it once and, and then at the second time we vote it. So I would, I would say, since we know we're gonna be remote on our last meeting in June, we can get the clarity and vote on it then for those two reasons. Well, we did talk about it at our last meeting, so. Not in detail, because we didn't have some of the, you know, language or about it, but. So to me, this is really our first sort of reading of what we're looking at approving, but. And we usually don't vote on the first reading anyway. We vote on the second. Yeah. That's been a, that's been a form um, right since I can ever remember. And, and, you know, the second point to that is we're meeting remotely in the last meeting in June, so we can have the clarification and then vote it. Would That would be my preference. But. I'd like some time to look at it, too, because I'm trying to read it here. It's just, it's not, it's, mm. I'm, I'm not, I would prefer to vote at our next meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Rob, you feel the same way? You, yeah, sure. What, yeah, I'll do okay. either. All right. Yeah. So we'll hold off on, on voting on that until June 30th, which is our next meeting. So let's be prepared for that. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you for everybody for understanding and uh, working together on this one. We want to make sure we get it right.
for sure. Uh, next on all the new business, uh, Michael, we have discussed naming the roundabout on Route 126 after Mr. Ed Bates. We want to- Yes, so um, Wayne Bates actually brought this up a while ago to me. Um, he had suggested uh, naming the roundabout, the newly created roundabout on 126 after his father, Ed. Um, those of you that have been in town a long time know how much the 126 project has meant to Ed for not just years, decades. He's worked tirelessly over that time period to get it in front of people, make sure it was um, a priority, made sure that you know it ultimately got to the place where it is today. And so I personally, I think it's a great idea. I, mean, I can't think of a better person to, to name it after. Um, but obviously this would be a board decision. The board typically named Rotary doesn't always, I don't know if we've named a roundabout. Considering we don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> or I guess, you know, something, something like that. However, we did take a vote uh, several years ago uh, to name a square after uh, some brothers who served uh, in World War II. So I don't see why we can't do a roundabout in the same fashion. I, I think this is a great idea. I think Ed has put so much into this. And what, if you, I don't know if you've ever sat in any meetings with him talking about Route 126 or just this whole project. And I think it's, it's a small thing to do for someone who has put a lot of time and energy into this project. Don't disagree with anything you just said. <laughs> Definitely agree. <laughs> I'm happy to sure. support that. For sure. So I would more than can happy I, um, to entertain a motion. Sure. Can I just say one thing? Uh, sure, Rob. Um, I'm sorry. So I think this is a great idea. I don't know if anyone's talked to Ed about it, but uh, presumably Wayne laid the groundwork, I guess. But uh, um, yeah, so this, I, you know, I also think it's a great idea. I just want to, a little bit of caution. We have some, you know, buildings coming up. Uh, and there may be some naming that could be, you know, relatively, uh, we just want to make sure we have a good process in place uh, to make sure that we're approaching these uh, kinds of decisions thoughtfully. So, well, I, I think this one, to be honest with you, Rob, is, is certainly one that would uh, value his name on it, seeing that he's worked diligently right from the beginning on this. Project. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm actually not speaking about this particular case, uh, yeah. but I think it's just uh, let's make sure that we, um, you know, going forward, that we understand that we have an open and uh, thoughtful process. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we have a naming academy. policy, but I know the schools have a couple. So yes, it might be yeah. interested to look at theirs and see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. at, this, at this stage of the game, unless there's anything else, uh, Brandy, do you have anything you would like to add to this discussion? No, I think it's, I think it's a great idea. I think that, um, you know, like Yolanda said, it's a small thing we can do to, to recognize a, a huge contribution to our community. So yep. um, I'm definitely in favor of doing this. Okay. Well, at this stage of the game, then I would be more than happy to entertain a motion. I, to you. I'll, I, I, I move that we name the roundabout on Route 126 outside of between Spyglass Hill and Shaw's the Ed Bates roundabout. <laughs> do, I, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, and I'll do a roll call vote, please. Uh, Rob Shear. Aye. Yolanda Greaves. Aye. Steve Mitchell. Aye. Brandy Kingsman. Aye. Joe Mignani. Aye. Well, I think that's a very uh, nice thing that we've done to a very nice man who's put a lot of time and effort into this community. So congratulations. But uh, let's, let's keep this under our hats. <laughs> you know what I was about to say is, um, don't worry, no one watches us. No one watches say, these think, anyway, right? Yeah. I think someone knows. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So that was that was going to be my suggestion. Is what, rather than wait a couple of years for the road to actually open, is that the board hold like a small, um, you know, ceremonial type event, maybe at a, a future board meeting this summer. That's like, great. Yeah. Sounds great. When we're in person. Yep. Does Ed want to come in person? I don't know. Yeah. He may or he may or may not, Rob. Right. He may or may not. 
remote participation. There you go, remote participation, yeah, absolutely. Just, just, just think about it. I mean, we name, as you've mentioned, we have squares and we have roads and so on, but uh, you know, as you said, Yolanda, only one roundabout, and it's probably the one and only never to be seen <laughs> again. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> oh my. Oh, all right. We're moving right along. Um, we need to announce the uh, the vacancy of the Board of Health and the Conservation Commission. Any interested party should submit a talent bank form, and a joint appointment will be discussed at our June thirtieth select board meeting. Uh, and this is to replace. Uh, KG Cariana, who uh, left, um, and hopefully he'll be back sooner than later. But he is his position is the position that we will be uh, filling in on the Board of Health and Conservation Commission. So again, anybody who is interested in this uh, position, please uh, fill out a uh, talent bank form and submit it to uh, Sue Roby at srobyashlandmass.com. Joe, I have a question. Sure. Are we planning on doing both the Board of Health and the Conservation Commission appointment on the 30th, both of them? Well, I would think, in, in knowing that the uh, we have, well, let's put it this way, and looking at our uh, town charter when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, vacancies yep. and uh, elected elected offices, uh, if- it's 180 days, right? It's uh, actually, not really, it's 45. If there is a vacancy in the elected office, uh, it shall be filled by the select board together with the remaining members of that appointed board in accordance by general law. And um, the select board and the remaining members of such multiple member board shall jointly file, uh, fill the vacancy in a roll call vote within 45 days of the vacancy. The select board then shall give notice of the vacancy 14 days before the planned appointment. Okay, so because we're not having that meeting, the first meeting in July, we're having it on June 30th, we can't wait until the 21st of July to do it because of these charter changes, these charter bylaws that we have in place. That's correct. Okay. So Unless we decided, remember we talked in July that we would meet if we thought it was necessary. If, if we needed to. And we're, and we, and we're meeting June 30th instead of July 7th. Right. right. It's yeah, not that we're, we're not missing correct. a meeting in July. We're just moving yeah. it up. Yeah. Of course. So Joe, that's for the board of health. So we would have a joint meeting with the board of health on the 30th and then the conservation commission, are they going to make a recommendation to us? I don't, we wouldn't necessarily need a joint meeting with them. Correct. They'd make a recommendation for an appointment. You don't need a joint meeting with them. Oh, that's true. No joint with conservation because we appoint right. them anyway. Just, just the board of health. Right. Cause we make the appointments. Right. Okay. So I'll, I'll check to see if we've received any talent bank forms for those yet. Okay. That is a good point about the Conservation Commission. Don't they need some time to make a recommendation, to gather information and make a recommendation? I think we're kind of depending on them to recruit, right? Unless we're, you know, unless some of us want. I can shoot out an email to uh, Gene Crouch and let him know that uh, if there is a, uh, an interested uh, participant, who's been coming to the meetings, but you know, it's just. I'm sure he's dealing with it now, but. Oh, go ahead, Sue. I'm sorry, go ahead, Sue. We do have somebody that has already put in an application and I did put both both openings up on the website under the news flash yesterday. Okay, I did not see those. All right, thank you. Can you, so can you send those that somebody for conservation commission, Sue, or? Oh, okay. We have somebody for both. Yeah. They're actually husband and wife. Oh, boy. Oh, that's interesting. Now, I do want to remind people that we had a candidate in Carrie for Board of Health that we did not appoint. And I think I've, she's trying to determine if she's interested in, in uh, applying again. Uh, yeah, I reached out to her via email to see if she's interested good. in doing okay. it. Oh, you, haven't heard back, you haven't heard back? Well, I haven't heard anything back, though. Okay. All right. Well, at least it's out there. Um, and it'll be on the website. So hopefully people uh, fill out a talent bank from that's interested and we'll get more than one or two people. That would be nice. All right, thank you. All right, moving right along. Doo, doo, doo. 
All right. Ms. Kinsman, discuss the potential state of development webinar. Uh, uh, before we get response. Response. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, wanna... My bad. My bad. I have it ready oh, for yeah. you. Review and consider and vote on the revised response to the open meeting law complaint against the Ashland Select Board dated May 25th, 2021, filed by Julie Nardone on file with the town clerk. Okay, uh, I'm sure that all of you have had the opportunity to read uh, the, the letter in response that we had from our council, uh, Alex uh, Castro. Is this, is this something that I need to read out loud to at this meeting or is this something that you've all read and yeah, so I, on. I hope everybody's had a chance to read it. I believe there were some uh, changes yep. um, in tone and, and maybe specifics that the board wanted included in a revised version. Yep. And so that okay. should be incorporated in here. All right. I am not aware of those, but if there are, if you want to discuss those now, or is this something that we can well, get? No, to this on? is from last our last meeting's discussion, Joe. This the information that's in front of us has inc has incorporated so these those are the changes, changes and recommendations. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. It's a I, for me. I feel right. better about this response. They, okay. they, reflect, they reflect everything that we talked about last week. Yep. Last yeah. Week. I reviewed okay. it. and I didn't have any. I, yeah. I didn't have any additional changes. Okay. Yeah, I I agree. All right. I thought it was good changes. Yeah. All right. So I, we need to take a vote on this. Yep. I move that we approve. The revised response to the open meeting law complaint as presented tonight. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Brandy seconded it and Yolanda made the uh, motion. And I will ask for a, a voice vote. Uh, Rob Shear. Aye. Steve Mitchell. Aye. Brandy Kinsman. Aye. Yolanda Graves. Aye. Joe Mignani. Aye. All right, that's five zero. Okay. And we will uh, get this sent out pronto, I would assume. Sooner than later. All right, thank you, everyone. And I know we're working diligently to make sure that uh, we try to get everything done the way it needs to get done. So now I will definitely turn this over to Brandy, discuss potential state development webinar. Okay, thank you. Um, so the idea for this really came about from conversations that I've been having with residents um, about specific projects that are happening in town. I'm sure you guys are having the same exact conversations I am. People ask about 10 to 50 Main Street. People ask about um, 501 Pond Street or uh, the Village of America. So, you know, there's been a lot of discussion, um, even on social media, about um, development, and you know, there's definitely some concerns that are that are happening in Ashland. Um, I think, as a community, I think it would be helpful for residents to really kind of understand what's driving development in Ashland, um, specifically private development in Ashland, and that's everything from a from what's happening on a state level with the governor. Um, encouraging housing production to um, to state legislature that 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 has passed um, has passed housing housing laws like 40B and 40R, um, and then also sort of what's happening uh, locally, like what the the shift from um, uh, commercial real estate and and there's really um, what developers are really proposing for private, um, for private property. Um, so really understanding what that process looks like when a project does come to Ashland, um, what kind of control we have as a community over projects, um, what the planning board process looks like, what the ZBA process looks like. Um, and I can tell you there's a lot of misconceptions out there um, that really the town is driving development in Ashland and that's um, really just not true. So what I'm proposing to do is, um, is really a webinar or a series of webinars to really outline the current state of development in Ashland, um, educate on the process and show where we have influence and also show what is legally possible 
um, because you know that that really um, has a lot to play in this, and really be open with residents as to where we are as a community. I think that um, a webinar would be really a, a useful tool because I think you know I was I was part of the Ashland Public Schools webinars when we did the reopening. Um, it allows residents to register and participate via uh, asking questions via a chat, and we can do a presentation and, and take questions um, in that way. So I think that, you know, what, what I'm asking is just, you know, I wanted to bring this to the board, get some initial thoughts and feedback. Um, I've had conversations with Michael about where I'm thinking this should go. There's a lot of information that we can share. So I think that this isn't just um, a one-time uh, webinar. I think it is probably going to be a series of webinars, but I think the more that we can educate the public on um, where we are as a community, I think that we will be in a better place um, to have those discussions. So um, so I just wanted to, to, to bring that to the board and, and ask for some initial feedback. Um, from you all. Brandy, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think there's not one of us that hasn't had the opportunity to sit or receive phone calls or emails from, from residents who are concerned about what's happening. Uh, my, my concern about all of this is that there is a flow of non-factual information that's being provided out there. And it's and it doesn't put not only us, but it doesn't put the town in a, in, in a good light because nobody is actually sure what is real and, and not real when it comes to fact-based information on any of the projects that are going on out there. Um, so hopefully this will deter that from happening uh, or minimize it to some degree. Uh, you're not going to change people's attitudes or, or they because they have a right to their opinions and, and I'm not trying to stifle anyone's opinion, but at least be factual when you present or provide information to others who may not know and do not know the, the ins and outs of what's going on in town. And these people will take that information uh, uh, as, as gospel per se. So hopefully this will help that. And, and, I, and I would just like to add, I, I appreciate you doing this all and I know it's a lot of work to it. And, and I think that at some point, these webinars and discussions and the factual information that's coming about from all these projects that you'll be discussing should be put on WACA for, for additional, you know, people to watch because they may not be able to be participants for, for the webinar for whatever reasons they have. And maybe putting these on WACA or even attaching it to our website uh, so people can monitor these things would be a, a, an additional welcome as, as well. So. I greatly appreciate that. I fully support and endorse what you're doing and then where I can help, um, I'm all for it. So I'll open it up to the board. Steve. So uh, I'm also supportive of this as well, Brandy. And I'm not sure if I missed something I did get up while you were starting the presentation, but you know, my, I guess concern is that we're not operating in a silo as a select board. I think it's very important that this is the planning board, the planning department is integral to this. And, uh, you know, I think it goes, in my mind, it goes to the fact that we don't have a comprehensive plan or a current comprehensive plan in town. And that's something that the, that is a product of the planning board. And uh, I don't believe, I think the last one, I, I don't even know the date uh, of the last one. Yolanda, you would know the date. Uh, I know the, the, the last iteration didn't go very well. So it's really the, the comprehensive plan that was existed before that, nor do we have an open space, a current open space and recreation plan as well. So, you know, all of these things to me tied together, uh, but I think it's critical that the planning board be uh, engaged in this process as well. Um, so, but I, you know, fully supportive. Joe, if I could. Yeah, I'm sorry, Yolanda. Yeah, so it's interesting, and Brandy and I talked about this probably about three months ago. I had a similar idea 
um, I have a draft email in front of me that I never sent to Michael because of everything that was going on. And when Brandy recommended it to me, I think, again, I think this is a very good idea. I think it's something we need to do. Um, I, I agree, whatever we do should be filmed so that it can be watched afterwards. Um, in regards to what Steve said, yes, our, comp our last comprehensive plan was I think from 05 we, or, 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 or around there, or maybe 07, we tried doing one between 13 and 15 and we got just about to the end point. We were very close to having a final product. And there were members of the committee who felt that the process wasn't complete. So the planning board at that time said, we're stopping this process for the comprehensive plan. Um, after that, we then asked Michael to work on a strategic plan and he's very close to that using some of the information from that initial strategic plan. Um, but as we all know, there's so much on Michael's plate that, um, you know, and depending on, on what was going on on our board was, was determining whether or not that was a priority. Um, so I think all of this sort of has to work together, just as Steve said. I think, you know, Brandy, I'm willing to work with you on this. I think it's a great idea. I think certainly with what we're looking at for development and as you said, the, the directive coming from the state in regards to more affordable housing and updating your downtowns, um, you know, so it's, 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 it's sort of a three prong, you know, it's almost a three prong approach. It's working on this webinar and determining on timing and when we wanna do it, including the planning board and certainly the planning department as we look at this but to Steve's point, it's getting our strategic plan completed that Michael is working on, getting our open space and rec plan from the open space and rec uh, committee um, and working this all together. So but I'm willing to work with you on that, Brandy. Just, uh, uh, you know, I think it's, it's an interesting idea um, and something we should be considering. Now, one thing it reminds me of what Steve brought up reminds me of is that we need to schedule our next retreat. And I, I guess I would suggest that would be a good vehicle to discuss this idea, plus the other things that are brought up, like the strategic plan and the open space plan and prioritization of projects, reviewing projects and prioritization. You know, we've got other things like the Upper Charles Trail is continuing. Plus now I think, you know, we should pay some attention to like the Girl Scout property, for example. So. I think we need to, you know, it's, I think we should um, include this as part of our agenda and discussion uh, at the retreat and try to come out of that, of it with an idea on this and some of the other things that we've been talking about. Okay. Well, what I would like to, to suggest, because I think that that's a good, that's a really good point, Rob, is that, because I also think that from a timing perspective, um, we need to do this sooner rather than later. Definitely. I, I don't, I think, you know, I've put together in my mind, like the thoughts, the initial thoughts on how this should go. I think that we should make sure that um, the planning department is, is a part of this discussion. Um, but I think, you know, when we start thinking about projects like UGC, which is in the final stages of, of um, hearing process through ZBA and you know, that project is not on the radar of 90% of Ashland. So when we start seeing more things that are coming forward, I think we need to kind of um, be as proactive as possible with communication. So what I would like to do, if we can, if we can set a retreat date, maybe at that point, I will have, um, you know, if I can work with, you know, work with town staff trying to put this together, I told Michael, I'd be happy to do the heavy lifting with this because I know there is a lot on their plate. So, um, and this is sort of in a little bit in my wheelhouse. I'm a communications person. I do, I do these types of presentations all the time. So I can at least put something together to, um, to have, you know, to show possibly at a retreat, depending on when the timing is on that. But I think, I think sooner rather than later is, is, is preferable. I don't, I don't want to, Get to the point where um, if 10 to 50 Main Street is is coming before us and before the planning board for hearings, um, you know, for town meeting, I I don't want to I don't want to be at that point where we're having this discussion. I want it to be kind of on the on the front end. Agree. And don't disagree. 
Yolanda, did you have anything on it? Michael? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I think I agree with all the points. And I think the urgency that Brandy is talking about is important too. I also think this is probably going to be a series because it's such a complex oh, thing. Definitely. So maybe we could get the first one rolled out pretty soon um, or sooner rather than later and continue to work on some of the other things and have conversations about them that we can retreat in future meetings. I'm sorry about this microphone, folks. I'm sorry. Um, but getting one kind of out there sooner rather than later with a bigger picture overview would probably be helpful. Hmm. Don't disagree, Michael. I appreciate everything that you uh, that you've done, Brandy, so far, and and Yolanda that started the, uh, you know, spill the the wheel spinning on on, on this idea. Um, kudos to to the both of you. And if we can help in some way, shape, or form, <clears throat> now that I have some extra time that I'm not subbing anymore, I'd be more than happy to uh, share some of that heavy load that you have to carry. I'd be more than happy to help out. Um, so I'll move forward. I'll move forward with with kind of starting to put this together, and and um, maybe at our next meeting we can provide I can provide an update, and then we can talk of a, a you know timeline on it. Sounds good. Great. Any other comments or concerns or other ideas? We're good. All right, Brandy, thank you for uh, taking this by the horns. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's a project time. well well needed for sure. Okay. Um, Priority projects, and I will turn this part of the discussion over to town manager, Mr. Herbert. All yours, buddy. Thank you. Um, so our downtown project uh, continues. Um, so over the next week, they're going to be put at GOCO, who's going to be our contract contractor. They'll be putting some more of those vaults in uh, into the ground. So you'll be seeing uh, a lot of those big boxes and big holes. Those big boxes go into the big holes. Um, so there will be a lot of work, mainly on Front Street at first, and then we'll move over to Main Street. Um, one thing I do want to address as part of this you know, downtown update is I do want to talk about uh, just the mobile and some of the, um, I don't know, misinformation that's being put out there. Um, I think the board has been very clear about a few things when Rich Gordon came before the board and talked about this initial proposal. One was that it needed to be smaller. So 200 units was kind of what where everybody thought would be a feasible number. 25% of it needed to be affordable. There needed to be more commercial space than what was initially proposed, which is around 15,000. Um, the businesses should be helped out and held harmless as much as possible. And that the granite structures, or at least the facade of the granite structures stay. Um, I don't think there's been any discussion about tearing down or ripping down the, the granite facade or the granite structures from anybody in town government. I think that's only been talked about by the proponent, the owner of the project. Yeah, right. So I, I think I just want to make that very, very clear to people, you know, whoever ends up watching this. <laughs> um, but I, I, there's just a lot of misinformation being put out there about this project, and hopefully that clarifies some of it. So I'm sorry to. No, I think that that's a, um, an important point to make. And, you know, I just remind that Yolanda and I constitute this uh, subcommittee of the board to kind of have public forums on this and continue forward. Uh, I'm just not sure, you know, where, what we should be doing with that at this point. Um, so what are, what are our thoughts on that? Um, well, you know, what do you think? What, what's your, what do you think? Well, I know the last time I spoke to Michael about a couple of weeks ago, we were waiting to hear back from the work that April's committee had, April's company had done. Oh, right. And yes. we were waiting for that draft Good report. Point. Michael was going to get the draft report, you know, work with it on April and then get it out to all of us. Okay. So I, I guess it's, you know, where is that, where are we at on that report? And once we have that, 
we should have a committee meeting. We'd, you know, the subcommittee of the two of us, the planning board people and the design review with Gordon to talk about his last proposal that he sent us that I'm like, I, I don't mm. understand why he sent that. Maybe, you know, he's, he's feeling like there's inactivity, which there, it has been somewhat, mm. um, you know, a little bit, but we've been busy with other things. Right. So well, I certainly one, agree that, that I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. The, the one thing in the last information we got from him, and I think this is something we have to look at as a town, is the idea of, of retail space, right? I mean, we, we have some empty retail space. There's a lot of empty retail space right now because of the pandemic. So to, I go back and forth. I mean, I know we've always said we want to support my business. We want more business in town, but if retail space is staying empty, what's the benefit now of, in, you know, having that number that we've asked him to have, um, but it might not stay empty forever. So. And retail space, it's not just re re commercial. It's just not retail space. Right. I understand that. I understand that. Right. We have a, there's a lot of commercial space in that building that is being used. It's, so it's, 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 offices, yeah. it's, it's other services. And right. stuff. It's the gyms. It's the, it's really retail. There's, there's there's a, half of that building, half of the commercial space is empty. It's right. Vacant. Right. And actually, I would say of that half, about 50% of it is industrial slash warehouse space. Right. Um, so, you know, oddly, there's like 30, 30,000 square feet of commercial slash retail space. I'm dist distinguishing that from industrial warehouse space. Um, I mean, that to me is the process that we need to, you know, get the, la the report from April. Yeah have our first meeting of the, of the sub subcommittee of you and I and the, you know, the planning board and design review and, and have a couple of public forums because I Which, think we, you know, we need to have that input. And yeah. I would say too, just, just as, you know, another note, when, when Rich Gordon last came to us, I think as a board, I think it was January. I think it's been a, quite a while. Yeah. Um, and when we had initially talked about fall town meeting, that was really, predicated on um, Gordon having a, a, a plan that, that resonated with us, with the yes. planning board, with the public. So, you know, I think, you know, going back to Michael's point about misinformation out there saying that it's definitely going to be on the town meeting warrant for the fall, that's, that's you know, that was, that was based in January on all of this happening and things are changing. So, you know, we need as a board to feel comfortable with what he's proposing and the finances behind what he's proposing because that's important as well. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, from, from the public's perspective, you know, we, we know that this is gonna require a zoning change and that if, if um, Rich Gordon is going to ask us to support a zoning change, we need to be comfortable with the project. So, um, you know, and that's kind of like the, that's where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, Michael, just, you know, I, so April, so his latest report is based on some sort of financial analysis. So will April's report be addressing that either directly or indirectly? Uh, the financial analysis. Well, that was that's my understanding of his rationale for the change in his plan. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, she started working on her report well before we got any kind of change. Um, no, I understand. But, is yeah. she, I mean, she does address the, the retail capacity in town and um, addresses a lot of concerns. It should. I mean, she's got the okay to take draft off of it and. Send over the finalized report. So, oh good. Oh good. Okay, looking forward to that. Day. Michael, do you have any idea when April's report will be finalized and provided to us? I, I hope by the end of this week, Joe. Great. Just, if she's got the green light. Okay. So let's just talk. See. <laughs> so we get that report. Um, should we be thinking about convening some sort of session, or should we? wait till we deal more with him as a select board? 
how no, are we I, thinking? I, I, I think we need to have this this subcommittee. That was the idea that the subcommittee okay. was do some going to do some work, so that the whole board wasn't, you know, and then we Got come it. back okay. to the board. Right, you right. because we have the input. We yeah. have the input from the other members as to what we're looking for. Well, so. yeah, the only reason I brought that up is because we thought we had kind of a parameter, a framework with yeah. him, but now I'm not so sure that we do, I guess. That's so. I, I think that's a point. Remember, we were actually starting to try to work on that development agreement with those points that I had mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, and now that has seemed to be, um, that has seemed to go by the wayside. So I'm happy to have a conversation with, um, Rich or, or Joe Antonellis, the attorney for the project, and uh, just ask them and say, what, you know, what's driving this? Um, I mean, I think everybody saw my response. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I don't think I don't think any any one of us didn't feel any 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 different than what you what expressed in your in your letter and response. So. No idea who that is. Are you bombed or... Yeah, we're it's a zoom bomb, it looks like. Oh, cool. You ain't getting not being so fucking stupid, you ain't getting bombed. Good. On the on the mill building. I read it. No, I didn't. I wouldn't well, know that. You can you can go on uh, on their website and and replay it. But uh, it was interesting. So I'm assuming that a resident of Ashland communicated with Fox 25 in order to create either some kind of controversy or or conspiracy concept here. But actually, it it was a I thought a reg a relatively benign uh, representation of of the building and and really i think i think it it it, it put our downtown in in more or less a positive light they had an in, they interviewed Ed Glitas from the bagel table who is 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 very positive about about downtown about being in ashland about the the project that's going on uh so very interesting uh, you know so again i assume that that a resident communicated with the intent to do this but it actually came off i thought in in again a, a more or less positive positive way it did i have to agree with you on that steve it went very well now am i being uh oh am i having audio issues as well you were no? echoing a little bit oh, a little echo. bit no sorry okay. that a little better yeah yeah okay sorry about that should I move uh, on to rail transit this point? I was just going to say, let's move on to the rail transit. All right, so we're, we're awaiting that report, and we'll see what we're going to, we'll evaluate next steps after Actually, that. Actually, before, and Mike's going to talk So, to Michael, when do you think we'll have that report? Um, I think I said before, I'm hoping earlier, or at the end of this week. Like so I said, can I we look at scheduling that first subcommittee meeting then, if we have that report? Okay. Right, with Rob and I and the two planning board members and the design review person? We could. Okay. okay, I just thought, Michael, you were suggesting that you talk to the developer and see. I mean, I'm I'm good either way, but if you want some time to talk to him, and you know, that's okay with me too. I would think that you. I think the two of you are probably going to need some time to read uh, April's report and digest that, and and probably develop any questions or concerns that you have with her report and get back to her and discuss that with with her before you guys meet, right? I, I yeah, would let's think. get the report and because I do think, Joe, to your point, I think there's gonna be some things that you're probably gonna to wanna to dig into and maybe clarify a little bit more. Okay. Um, I didn't take the liberty of, of making that. All right. Okay. Um, All right, so at some point that report, one is, provided will be distributed to uh, Rob and Yolanda. Let's move on to the uh, rail transit district. Well, probably the whole board would want to see it, the I think. Well, yeah, yeah, it's going to be sent to the whole board. Yes, the whole board commission. Um, rail transit district, so UPC is continuing their permitting process. 
Um, Peter, our town planner, anticipates there's probably two or three more meetings left to go with that uh, project uh, before people feel comfortable with it. Um, I believe construction has started on the Upper Charles Trail. So, um, as you know, we were successful in getting the easement um, right. from the YMCA at the meeting. So, I think that's a that's good news for everybody. Yes. Right, right? Very nice. Um, moving on to the public safety building. Um, not too much to report. I've got. Um, they are laying, they are putting in uh, rebar, putting in forms. They're getting ready to pour concrete. Um, it's a pretty exciting development. Uh, the committee met yesterday, reviewed a number of, of small change orders that needed to be made. Uh, very small, we're talking about like $2,000 or such. There's a larger one, but it's being done as a change order as opposed to being shifted around in the original budget. But, uh, all, all signs seem to be pointing to a successful project. So far, so good. So far, so good. Um, don't have an update on the Warren District uh, for the Valentine Committee. We did have uh, our, the first subcommittee meeting for the conservation restrictions yesterday. Uh, Steve and Brandy. Uh, that. We have good, good attendance, uh, members of the public and members of the Valentine Committee. And really, we discussed uh, process on how to develop these conservation restrictions, some of the guidelines, some of the boundaries, and uh, everybody seems to be on board in the same direction. In the same direction. I, I feel like I'm like in the army or something, and I'm on like one of those radios. Yeah, it's hard to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then the route one two six project. Um, I don't have a traffic update right now, but I should be spending on that soon. Uh, again, I think the good news there is that we're going to name the rotary after a roundabout, geez, um, after Ed Bates. Okay. Town manager's report. Okay, the first thing is uh, actually, do you folks mind if I jump off and jump on again? See if that Go right ahead. That's fine. See if that helps. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. I was, <laughs> I was just thinking that same thing. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh my! Any good summer plans, anybody? Going Back to see Springsteen. What was what? that, Steve? Going to see Springsteen. Oh, when's that? That's in in August. That was a harder ticket to get. That was harder to get that ticket than it was to get a, a, a vaccination date when, <laughs> when it became available. Well, we we had we had tickets to James Taylor at Tanglewood for this year, for July fourth. Nice. They pushed it to August. They have already sold more tickets than the community is allowing for at the venue at Tanglewood. So now we have tickets for next July 4th, so. Oh, gosh. Uh, Evening, Michael. Hey, Michael, you're back. Okay. He's muted. You're muted, Michael. All right, Michael, you're muted. There you go. Hopefully this is a little better. Yes. So far, so good. And not really. <laughs> All right. Um, the first thing I, I want to discuss with you is a new tourism destination and marketing district. Um, this is something that's being proposed by the Metro West Visitors Bureau. A tourism destination marketing district is very similar to a business improvement district. And this particular thing would be funded through a surcharge on hotels. Um, and what, what, what it does is it collects money that can be used to support the entire district. Um, so obviously you, you would need to have the buy-in of the hotel proprietors with the town looking at or I believe 63%, um, I should say, uh, before you can join a group. We only have one, which is the Union Conference Center, and they are wholeheartedly endorsing this. Um, it's a really interesting concept, really interesting idea. Um, provided a, 
you know, as much information as I have right now um, in your packet, yeah. we do expect to have uh, a number of board members come to the Metro West Visitors Bureau to come and talk a little bit more about it um, at, a, at the next select board meeting or at a future select board meeting. Because uh, we do have to hold a public vote and then a public hearing, I should say, and then vote on the proposal. Okay. Town no. meeting review. Town meeting review. Um, well, we met on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for our annual town meeting. Um, we have 10 articles on there. Um, um, all of them passed. Um, I think probably the one that generated the most discussion was were obviously the downtown zoning articles. Um, appreciate some of the work that was done to make some clarification uh, at the last meeting. And um, so we had some discussion around those. Um, financial uh, financial uh, articles passed, so we have a budget. Uh, we're transferring our money into OPEB. So we should be in place for and set for another year, I should say. Um, really want to thank everybody who worked to make this make this happen and put it on. Um, especially the moderator, IT director, uh, Paul Carpenter, Jen Ball, Tara Ward, um, Cindy Livingston, um, John at the facilities department. Really, this is really the team effort. And um, I want to thank everybody for putting that together. Hopefully, this is the last one we'll have in the time. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I just want to echo those remarks, Michael. The, the good effort by every great effort by all concerned. I thought it worked very well. Um, I think we should probably either now or some other time discuss when we should have town meeting. I thought that Saturday was both had both its pros and cons, um, and you know. Um, we should kind of revisit that discussion of um, well, whether we're experimenting with Saturdays or, or weeknights or Sundays for that matter. So, I think Saturdays are tough personally. I think yeah. that, um, you know, I know we wanted to try to, to see if we could reach out to, to get more people and more different people than, than, than typically come. We wanted to attract families. I, I know that. Um, not having childcare is, is, is one thing that I, that is important to parents. Um, but I would say, you know, for, for my perspective, I think possibly going back to a weeknight might be the best solution. I also heard from, um, uh, a Jewish friend that having, um, Saturday morning, um, town meeting wasn't, um, she she felt that that wasn't wasn't a good choice. So um, I think we should be respectful of that. I think I think weeknights are are probably the least offensive way to go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rallying cry. Least. Offensive. <laughs> you know, I do think though that if it might have been more successful if it was held, you know, during its original date in early May, as opposed to June. Um, you know, the first or second week in June with all of the sports and all the activities. So, you know, I, as Rob said, I think there's pros and cons, but, you know, I, I, Brandy, I think you bring up the best point, you know, for, for, uh, for the religious uh, reasons that, uh, you know, that, that people do, you know, we have a set a population that uh, this is their Sabbath. Well, we could um, offend everybody and go to Sunday morning, you know, and alternate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say that, you know, I think it's, whereas we did it on a Saturday to experiment, I think, to Steve's point, had we done it in May on a Saturday, it, it might have been, maybe people were more, more aware. Uh, the other thing is, we definitely, you know, now that we're not having to worry about COVID, we need to go back to making sure we have some childcare available. I mean, I did see one mom and her daughter at the town meeting on Saturday, and might more people have come had there been childcare available? And I don't know if we probably couldn't have done it yet because of COVID restrictions, but I know the couple of evening town meetings where we had childcare available to like nine, we had a good turnouts. So something to think I, about moving forward. Good point, Yolanda. Uh, excellent point. And I, and I agree, uh, Brandy, I, I did receive a uh, 
a phone call uh, with uh, the stream uh, displeasure about the fact that uh, we were, uh, un, you know, not respective to a, a Sabbath. And, and I understand that completely. And um, so we tried it. The experiment was tried uh, because other people thought that would be, you know, a, a, a good idea. We heard from the constituents out there. Let's try another day. Let's, we did it. We tried it. It didn't work. Not that it didn't work, but we didn't get the outcome that we were hoping to get. So uh, <clears throat> we just go back to what it was before and uh, before before pre-COVID uh, issues. And hopefully next year we, we'll be back to some sort of normalcy with a you know an evening meeting and uh, uh, a May meeting as well. So, all right. Anything else on that, uh, Michael? Are we good? Oh, no, I'll move on to the university club. Sure. Item. So Framingham State has, has uh, owned the Warren property for a while now, and uh, they've been trying to come up with a model that's sustainable for them financially, as well as meets their mission. Um, um, what they have come up with is what they're, what they're calling the university club model. And uh, basically what, what it is, is for a, an annual fee, members of this club have the ability to um, utilize the property, and I think in more exclusive ways. It doesn't mean that it's um, not public property anymore, but uh, would have access to more private trails on the site. Um, I think there's going to be pickleball. They would have or a first choice on some of the reservations, things of that nature. So that's going to be rolled out very, very soon. Um, the fee is $25. Uh, it's going to be open initially for Framingham State alumni, uh, faculty, and students. And um, residents. Yes, and Ashland residents. So um, hopefully, um, I'm interested to learn more about it. Um, it's certainly something that I plan on trying to, uh, you know, trying to join if they've let me in. And um, it, I'm, I'll have more information on it as it becomes available. Uh, Mike, did you say what the annual fee might be? 125. Um, 125, 125. A year. Oh, yeah. A year, yes. Okay. There's some additional information with respect to that. They were expanding the uh, parking lot uh, by the tennis court area. Um, and it was, I <clears throat> had conversation with one of the individuals who was gonna be working that uh, specific uh, uh, community club. And um, hmm. he uh, it's explained to us, he, he, they were gonna hot top and I said, it's probably not a good idea. You may wanna keep it, uh, you know, gravel and uh well <clears throat> they're, they're going to talk about that uh, sooner than later uh, i guess they're meeting all this week to go over some of the particulars about it um but it will be private parking there will be no public parking available so anybody that wants to utilize the the property like they have been in the past will not be allowed to do so oh that's interesting That'll affect so i don't know how that's going to work but that's that's what I'm hearing. That's that could hearing. Uh, that could affect us as well. Yeah. Well, it, it could. Parking. Yeah. It could. So uh, we just need to be alert on that, be aware of that, and, and I have uh, <clears throat> good side, a good source of information that's going to be coming to me. Uh, so you will will have the the news sooner than later. So uh, with respect to that, so it's still in the works. Yep. It's still in the works. All right. Thank you, Michael. Anything else? That's it. You good, Michael? Thank you. Feel better. Thank Board you. reports. And I will start with former chairperson, Yolanda. Thank you, Joe. A couple things. I was able to uh, chair and post with MAPC and the Metro West region. In the swap region, we had a fireside chat with our state senator and president, Senate, uh, Senate President Karen Spilka. It was a very nice discussion talking to her about some of the issues for our region. Uh, I also then sat in on the 495 Metro, Metro West Partnership 
Day on the Hill. It was done virtually. And again, we got to hear from the Senate president as well as from some of the legislators uh, in regards to some of the initiatives in regards to the budget and some of the things that we saw have happened now with the um, with the bills that were passed and signed by the governor. A couple of things coming up. Uh, Ashland is busy on Saturday. I won't talk about the morning -ish event because I know others will, but uh, at from 12 to 2 at the corner spot is a celebration by uh, the We Are United group. It's the Juneteenth celebration. And I just got notification that our public library is closed on Saturday because it's a state holiday this year. And that's all I have. Thank you, Yolanda. Brandy. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, so I, I know that this information was shared with the board, but I wanted to let the public know as well. Um, we did get news that our housing production plan that we had um, adopted as a board and the planning board had adopted, um, had been sent off to the state for certification and we did receive the certification back from the state. So we do have a uh, bona fide uh, certified housing production plan. Yeah. So that is um, really good news. Um, that will become really better news when we um, when we permit the UGC <laughs> when we permit the UGC uh, uh, proposal as well. So um, that is uh, you know, and then we're going to be starting to work on uh, with MAPC the inclusionary zoning um, bylaw. And uh, actually, I got an email from MAPC today, so that's going to be um, kicking off pretty soon. So we'll be we'll be starting that process um, with the idea that that will come to um, fall town meeting. So um, and I was at the corner spot opening day, which was a lot of fun a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to give a special shout out to um, Girl Scout Troop 67223 that was there. They had um, made this awesome sign. If you've driven by or been at corner spot, you'll see it. It says kind, and it has an opening um, where you can put your head in the eye and kind. So, um, and basically the, the thought is that um, when you can be anything in this world, be the eye and kind. And I love that message. So uh, I just wanted to thank the Girl Scouts for putting that together. And there was a really cool little ribbon cutting ceremony that Beth Reynolds had done for the girls. So, um, so that was pretty awesome to be a part of that. And um, I was also at the corner spot for an ABA event, networking event uh, about a week ago. So it was the first time that I've really seen a lot of our small business owners um, since, since COVID. And it was really good to be able to talk to people um, and hear what their challenges currently are and what they've been through the past year um, and how we are rallying as a community behind our small businesses. So. Um, the ABA is always a, a good supporter. So um, I would encourage folks that um, to always support our ABA uh, businesses. Um, and finally, I just wanted to say today is the last day of school in the Ashland Public Schools. Hey! Um, <laughs> I have a very happy eighth grader, soon to be rising freshman, or actually rising freshman now. Um, so I just wanted to give a, 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 a big thanks to um, the Ashland Public Schools administration, teachers, staff, parents, students. Um, this was like the year that never one, never in a million years anybody could have ever predicted. Um, our schools did an amazing job. Our parents did an amazing job and our kids really rallied. It was, it was a um, a hard year, but I think that it was a very successful year. So I just wanted to thank um, all of the Ashland Public School community, as well as the school committee for all the work that they've done this past year. It's been tireless. And uh, I hope and wish everyone out there a well-deserved and very, very restful summer. So, yay. So that's all for me. Thank you, Brandy. I'll entertain a motion to extend our meeting past 10 o'clock. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. With <laughs> that. With enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. I, I, I. With that, Mr. Shear. Sure. Um, just a couple items. Um, 
next week uh, for registered Democrats, the Ashland Democratic Cop Committee is holding its caucus to select delegates to the convention. The caucus will be, uh, that's Thursday, um, June 24th at seven o'clock. It will be, um, you go to the Ashland Dems uh, website to uh, register for that. It will be a virtual caucus. So, uh, and that will be to select delegates to the Democratic State Convention in September. So that's uh, next Thursday at 7 p.m. And I also, I just wanted to briefly echo um, Yolanda's comments about Juneteenth um, um, this Saturday, uh, you know, the Ashland is United is um, putting together from 12 to 2, as she said, a Juneteenth celebration. And I just wanted to take a moment to um, think about that and to thank them for uh, to putting on that celebration. I think this is the first time we've done it at Ashland. It's been building in the past years. And I think, you know, one thing, um, and for people who don't, um, who don't know that Juneteenth is basically a celebration of the end of slavery in the United States and uh, has its own um, celebrated in the African-American community almost exclusively for the past hundred years. And I'm glad to see that it's expanding um, into, um, you know, the, the greater culture is as large. Cause I think, you know, in speaking for, um, or, you know, speaking as a white person, that this was a heritage that we had kind of forgotten ourselves and we got, caught up in the myth of the of the uh, the um, the uh, romantic myth of the, uh, of the of the southern cause and all that and we lost really a lost a bit of our own history and the reality of slavery and I think that um, it's really good that um, that and I would like to thank the organizers for bringing that back and help us reclaim some of our own heritage um, both white and black um, to uh, understand our history better so, um, so I think it's a great thing, and that's twelve to two this Saturday at the corner spot. So, wanted to thank thank them for that, and that's it for me, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you, Rob. Mr. Mitchell. Well, thank you, Joe, uh, and I'd like to echo also uh, Yolanda and Rob's uh, notations on on Juneteenth. Uh, uh, it's no, it's currently it's a state holiday, but soon to be a national holiday. Congress did pass. Uh, a legislation to make Juneteenth, Juneteenth a national holiday. Uh, this, presumably, President Biden will sign that. And uh, but uh, uh, I, you know, Rob, I just to just to clarify, it's an interesting story where Juneteenth came from because it it it, it really was proclaiming the end of slavery in Texas in That's 1865. Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, it took three years from yeah. for that information yeah. to get from, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation to Texas. So it really is a, a very interesting story. So, uh, but uh, Michael did address a little bit of the Valentine uh, Property Subcommittee. Brandy and I met yesterday afternoon. Brandy and I were in, in rooms B, C, and we had... Uh, a laptop and we had a, a good representation of uh, both the committee and the public and uh, as Michael suggested we kind of it was a short meeting uh, it was at two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, we talked about guidelines we talked about processes we talked about the, the legal issues involved and uh, we we have uh, uh, are posting our next meeting on July the 12th that will be at 6 30. And uh, I'm assuming we'll do it in a similar way, Brandy, but we can, we can figure that out uh, as we get a little bit closer. But uh, uh, it went well, and I think we've got, uh, I think we've got the, the foundation for, for uh, making progress reasonably quickly with, uh, with a draft to bring back to the board. Uh, and the last thing on my list is I want to invite certainly everybody uh, that's present here, everybody that's listening to the 10th anniversary celebration of the Metro West famous Ashland Farmers Market. Uh, it's, uh, we're gonna have a, a short ceremony starting at 10 o'clock, uh, Senate President Spilka, Representative Lewis, uh, Town Manager Herbert, uh, Select Board Chair Mignani, will all have, uh, uh, be able, will be there to help us celebrate and, uh, 
our musical performers this week are, are the only group that has performed all 10 years of, of the farmer's market, and that's the Railroad House Band. So uh, should be a good time. I think the weather's going to cooperate. We had a great opening day last week. Uh, vendors sold out. And uh, so we're looking forward to our 10th anniversary celebration. So be there or be square, as they say. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you, that. <clears throat> We look forward to it, for sure. Um, quickly, I'd just like to uh, say that I had the uh, distinct pleasure of representing the select board uh, this past weekend, uh, actually Sunday, at the VFW for uh, an Eagle Scout ceremony that um, we provided a proclamation to Andrew uh, Rice. Uh, Andrew was involved in... Uh, working uh, with the uh, town forest committee and he had uh, set aside an area to uh, keep uh, deer, deer out and let uh, wild, uh, wild plants and uh, things of that nature grow. So, um, and the good thing about this particular project, it can be moved from one place to another, which is, which is great. And that'll help uh, restore the, uh, the vegetation in the town forest. Also, unfortunately, we couldn't attend because we had town meeting. There was another uh, Eagle Scout uh, ceremony, and that was uh, Justin O'Brien. And um, so I called it, uh, it was Eagle Scout weekend for Ashland. And we're, we're, we're pretty lucky, if you think about it. Ashland has had, over the years, um, received a lot of work and a lot of uh, great projects as a result of the Eagle Scout projects that are required for them uh, to get their badge, their Eagle badge. And uh, thankfully, uh, Ashland has been uh, proud recipients of, of many of their projects. And we're grateful to Troop 232, um, the great leadership that they have in that group and, uh, and, the, and the fine young men that are, that are in this program. And I can wish them the continued success over the, over the years to come. Uh, again, uh, like Steve said, the 10th anniversary of the Farmer's Market. Look forward to being there. And tomorrow afternoon, uh, we have an affordable house, uh, affordable trust meeting. Uh, we will be discussing the inclusionary uh, uh, rule. Mm -hmm. and hopefully we can uh, get that uh, underway and start working on that as well. And we're, we're looking for other projects to do. Uh, are we having somebody from, hopefully, I uh, haven't heard back from them from Habitat of Humanity. Uh, they would like to do a project in town. So we're, we're kind of busy with that with that group and we're looking forward to uh, to bigger and better things as years go on. So that's all I have to say. I'd like to thank everybody. Uh, good meeting and uh, <clears throat> sorry for some of the rough spots, but I'll, I'll get I'll get better as, as time goes on. And um, thank you, Sue, for the the larger the larger uh, imprint that it makes it a lot easier for me to see. And uh, I will be happy to uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Voice vote. Rob Shear. Aye. Aye. Yolanda. Aye. Steve. Aye. Brandy. Aye. Myself. Aye. Thank you all. Uh, good Thank night. You. And uh, stay safe Saturday. out there. And happy summer. Happy summer, everyone. Happy Father's Day to those who are oh, fathers. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Yolanda. Forgot about that. Thank you all. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye now.